Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the May 17th, 2022 uh, meeting of the Litchfield Planning Board. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, Sam and Ron are not going to be with us this evening. I don't know about Curtis. I didn't hear anything. Um, we do have a quorum. We have a members here. Um, so I'll do the roll call of members. Michael Croto, chair. Kate Stevens, vice chair. Kimberly Quinn and selectman's rep. James Buffetti, a member. All right. And we have um, Jay Mankara from NRPC. Welcome, um, as always. Um so first off, um, I'll start off the meeting with uh, public input on non-agenda items, items not uh, listed on the agenda for this evening. Are there any members of the public who wish to comment on uh, non-agenda items? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I will close public input on non-agenda items, um, and we will proceed with the first order of business uh, this evening, which is volunteer applicants to the board. Uh, we did receive a couple of um, volunteer um, applications, it looks like, or registration forms that were submitted. Um, I have uh, Constance Jackson, Adam, Quintal and Ron Trattini. Are those folks present this evening? No, I didn't no. hear back from anybody. Okay, all right. Um, okay, maybe they'll show up at the, some uh, time in the meeting. We'll, we'll wait and see. Um, so I'll move on from that uh, to the work session regarding Albuquerque Ave traffic issues. Um, I know this was put on the agenda um, for tonight. This is a sort of a workshop session. Um, and I don't know um, if we want to start off. Kim, do you want to start off with um, this um, sure. presentation? And uh, I know that you were the one that sort of um, was interested in sort of putting this together. Yeah, so. uh, there's a lot of us here doing that. And I know Kate has some stuff. Um, um, sure. Did everyone get the email I sent? I have a few hard copies. I might have I, to share. I couldn't print it. Oh, yeah, it's big. <laughs> oh, so you don't have a computer? Do you, can you guys share? I've got it up there. Oh, you screen. have it up there. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you guys don't even need this then. Okay. Do you have, do you have one I could use? Uh, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't print it. I'm giving you black and white because things expensive. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So let me get out of that. All right. So this is a big topic. Um, once you start digging into um, Albuquerque, I notice we have some people in the audience here who were here when Albuquerque probably went in, right? Um, and we're at the prior meetings of why it was approved for the, by the town and how it turned into a neighborhood to maybe get the traffic off 3A, and now it's starting to turn into another main road. So it would be nice to hear the history uh, of that. But we are where we are today with that road. Uh, again, there's really no nice place to start, so I'll just follow my sheets. Um, uh, there was an initial Facebook posting, what, about six weeks ago maybe, where we started to hear from the public about um, problems on Albuquerque. It was mostly obnoxious driving. I think it was tailgating and speeding. Um, so I think Kate and I went out uh, different times and we looked at uh, signage and we looked at crosswalks and we noticed that maybe the school got a little congested at a couple of peak times in the day. Um, what else did we notice? Maybe some major intersections need some crosswalks or at least painted ones. So we started to see this thing get bigger. I did meet with Troy Brown about this, about maybe utilizing you and your uh, NRP service. I have the letter here, but I wanted to see how tonight turned out. <laughs> so the two paragraphs are probably going to balloon pretty, pretty big. All right. So um, I, I, I just started to do my own um, um, research, and these, this is what I came up with. If anybody wants one more hard copy, I do have it in case they want to write notes. So uh, I broke it up into seven parts, speeding, tailgating, obnoxious drivers on Albuquerque for safety concerns. We also had people going through stop signs that was also being posted. Crosswalks at major intersections, 
increasing safety, maybe pedestrians near the high school. Um, I took photos at that time also that are in this packet that you'll see up here. Uh, uh, number five, maybe uh, we can talk about rumble strips, other traffic calming measures. Uh, number six is uh, more signage for the playgrounds. We have two playgrounds at least on this. We have um, the tennis courts. We have Dara Pond. We have a trail over at the intersection here at the town hall. Um, yeah, so I think with schools on that road and parks on that road, it's something that we need to look at. Uh, maybe not a discussion tonight, although Kate may have a different decision uh, on this or others in here. Sidewalks, you might have been part of what you came up with. I haven't had a chance to read your presentation yet. Uh, bike lanes on the road. Um, we can maybe, I don't know if that's tonight's discussion. Maybe we're just focusing on Albuquerque tonight, but this is part of maybe the solution later. Um, I did look at our zoning ordinances for uh, Litchfield, 1500 on page 95, if you look it up. When we're looking at signs, it said no signs except town and state highway direction and regulatory signs. Signs may be used on Albuquerque Avenue. So if we try to solve this with signs like some more speed limit signs or park coming, you know, it has to be a sign that is recognized by New Hampshire <laughs> as a valid road sign. All right, if you can go to the next page. I did look at two YouTube videos, which I put in here. Um, if you anyone wants to take the copy, you can. One of them was um, dealing with signage on the road itself, and one was just dealing with schools. So if you look at them, one's seven minutes, one's four minutes. I might have you play part of one, like 50 seconds, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so number one was speeding, tailgating. If you cannot stop in time or the current, because people must be speeding because they perceive it to be too low for that road. That's number one. Um, uh, and, th and then we're going to get into how you can't really stop in time. So if you're going 20 miles an hour in a car and you are hit by a car, nine out of 10 pedestrians will survive and one will die. And we all know that nobody's doing 20 miles an hour driving on Albuquerque. 30 miles an hour for, what is it? Five out of 10 are going to be uh, die. And that dying means within 30 days. So in case you do go to the hospital, <laughs> you know, and it, it, you might perish within the 30 days. If you're hit by a vehicle of 40 miles an hour, nine of you are going to die. All right. So I wanted to not just show one statistic because there's multiple statistics. I pulled up another one just to, so, just to see the 20, 30, 40 from something else. This is the U.S. Department of Transportation Highway, kind of in line along the same thing. So I think what I was thinking here is if you're trying to make an argument that maybe we need to speed up on Albuquerque, I think this is not a great idea. That's just my own opinion, <laughs> but we'll see what happens here. The next one, uh, this was also from some highway statistics. They broke it up between fatalities, the dark black line, the gray line is being injured and then uninjured. So again, those statistics are pretty much in line here. In, in um, fairness, it is by age. If you are hit by a car and you're 14 years or younger, you're going to see that bottom graph. You have a better chance of living. Uh, 15 to 24, you can see the percentage. So the miles per hour are going across the bottom of the screen and the, and the percentage being killed by your age group is listed here. Litchfield's an aging town. I don't know what our latest statistic is, but I know we're over 50%. It must be 55 and older in this town. All right. So that's one thing is speed. And I only went up to 40 miles an hour. We'll get into more in a little bit. So if you are driving down the road, you have to perceive the distance you're going. You have to see something in the road. You have to make a response. You have to think about it. And then you have to apply the brake. And that gets into the next two charts. So 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, all the way to 70 miles an hour. This tells you how many feet it takes to stop between just thinking and braking. So I'm averaging maybe people doing 45, 50 on that road. So 174 feet average to stop. So if you see something, it takes you that long maybe to stop. Um, okay, so I just wanted to, and these are just two, two graphs that are backing up that information. Remember, if you watch a football game, what is that, 300 yards? What's a, what's a football game? 100 yards? Is it 300 feet? Okay, so 70 miles an hour, it takes a football field to stop. I don't know, I'm just telling you what the statistics are saying. Um, this one got into whether it's a truck versus a car. Obviously, anything heavier is going to hurt you more, <laughs> and it's going to take longer to stop. Um, the second, the last chart after this one breaks it up by an average automobile, a light truck hits you, two-axle two truck or, or a bigger truck. 
So the statistics aren't good. I've overshot you. Am I on the wrong slide? Say that again? I think I've, I think I've passed you. Nope. Oh, yeah, I was already passed that one. So I just wanted, if anyone wanted to look at the data. I will get into my experiences. I live on that road. These all go by. All right. So my experience, I live on Newstead in Albuquerque, right at the corner. My house faces it. I've had two neighbors that have been hit trying to enter Newstead Street from behind, either direction. They just had their blinker on waiting to turn. Nobody stopped behind them, happened on both directions. There's been four accidents at that stop sign that I know of. Um, somebody flipped into the back of my, uh, oh, that, we got to wait on that. I got to go back to the red. I'm doing my, my experiences. A car flipped into my yard. It was, she sort of dropped her purse as she went to do this. You'd think she'd roll this way. She came in this way, into my front yard. It's a 35 mile an hour limit there. <laughs> uh, thank God she wasn't dead. I don't know how you do your job because I didn't want to find a smear when I went out there because her car was, and a tree went through it, barely got her. She survived it. So my son is not playing in my front yard. <laughs> Cars travel over the white paint line on the right hand side. So I'm out there weeding my garden <laughs> and there's a car right there. It's dangerous when I walk down Brenton Street, I get to the Brenton and I want to cross Albuquerque because there's a curve there. And when I step out in the road, I'm, sometimes I step back as a car is flying around that corner. Maybe you can clip some trees, that would be handy. <laughs> but a child doing that on a bike is going to have a problem. I had my son play with some friends on Brenton Street and I tell him, don't go across Albuquerque, go down Newstead, go that, you know, go play to get to his house that way. They didn't listen. They almost got hit. He came home, home later. Oh, he almost got hit by a car. Great. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. Okay. Um, Newstead Street, we have a neighbor in my yard, uh, neighborhood that does get to the bike path in the snow. He will put a snow blower through because it's such a popular place for people to cross to get to the bike path. So even in the winter, he's trying to make a clearing to get through there. Okay. You all know you get, you know, people give you the gesture when you turn onto your street. They get upset if I want to take a right onto Newstead Street. They are beep, beep, honk, honk. How dare you try to stop to get into your street? Okay, I'm going to move on beyond that. So one of the reports I saw in our master plan was this bike path and this walking path falls under recreation. It's under, you know, like an asset of that. And in my mind, this is just inviting people to go over there because that's where you have to go to enjoy using that part of them. Okay. Um, I also did some research on bikes. And, I, and maybe my data is obsolete, but it did say New Hampshire treats bikes like vehicles. They shouldn't be on a, a sidewalk or a bike. They should be on the street. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that's changed. We'll, we'll have lawyers look at that. It's, in fact, against the law for an adult to ride on a sidewalk. So we call it a bike path, but I don't know if we really should be. It's a walking path. Fine. Okay, so that might come into that's why I put the bike for it's another a, it's discussion. It's a path, but I'm just to interject, but yeah. it's it's built below the current recommended standard width of 10 feet. Okay. All right, I have seen the light trucks, the mid-sized trucks, the large trucks speed down the road, and many are doing over 50 on a Friday when they want to get home from work or at the end of the day in the summer. Those big trucks are going way over 50 miles an hour. There is no way you're going to make it across that street. Thank God you keep an eye on the kids. We all do. Oh, they come in too fast. My, my mailbox has been taken out twice. They come in so quick. I'm just speaking from Newstead. I don't know what's happening on the other part of Albuquerque. I'm only giving mine. All right, let's all move on. So I was thinking, as I was looking at this, more signage may help. That's after this one, um, Jay. Yeah, wait, let me, I do that. Let me shrink it and then click. There we go. So more signage. This is uh, when you watch that first YouTube video, you can see the signs that can blink and they work well at night. So I, I saw if, you're, if the, you know, you're six minutes and you'll see, you'll see that. More signage maybe at night. You can, there's a signage saying what the limit is versus what you're doing, just bouncing the radar off. You're not reporting anybody. You're not getting a ticket. I don't think we can take camera pictures in New Hampshire anyway. <laughs> maybe the highway can, but we can't in the town. But at least this will be one way to tell the driver that they're going over the speed limit night and day. Next one, that's the one right there. So our speed limit would be 35. If you're going through at 40 or 50, you, you will know. Not saying it stops anybody, but it will probably stop some. Next one is some more potential signage that we could use on Albuquerque. 
I, I, there's a couple here on tailgating. I don't know. That's just that's not a law. That's you know, that's probably enforcement than anything. But these are these are just ideas. I was saying if we're going to look at it from a signage point of view. Next one. There are children at play. Slow down. We've all seen these signs growing up. All right. I'm going to start number two of seven. Unless you want to stop. I don't want to. You want to. Talk about speed and stopping time. You want to go on to the next section of intersections. <laughs> you want to just get through it and just go. All right, intersections. Uh, we're hearing a lot, and they call it blow through when you go right through an intersection. And we've seen a lot of postings on that on Facebook, haven't we? All right. I ingress. Were they going and they, north or south? Uh, <laughs> that's scary. How fast were they going? I mean, even if it, it's 20, you're going to get 30, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> oh, that's scary. So this was that same movie, again, using, remember we saw the blinking light for the speed. It might help at night. Here's one for stopping. Right now, if you're at Route 3A, then you have that intersection at Albuquerque and Hillcrest. You keep going, you get to the four-way at Pinecrest, and you keep going, and you get to Talent. I don't know if that's a two-way stop sign or four-way. I'm not really sure. It's, two -way. Two -way. it's a two-way. <laughs> There was talk in the past, I don't know if it's ever happened, of when the circumvental highway was going to go live, I don't think it is anymore, to punch through all the way to, to Page Road into 102. If that ever did happen, that really would be a big strip, that Albuquerque. But as of now, that's not the case. But the major intersections will be Albuquerque Hillcrest, Albuquerque Pinecrest, Albuquerque Talent. Those are the ones that we're hearing people going through. So there are stop signs that again light up, solar powered, right? They they will adjust it based on the light uh, of the day, you know, day or night, whether how bright that will be. We're using these little, I guess, what do you want to call these flashing <clears throat> signs? It, re it reduces the blow through by 52.9 percent, and it reduces incomplete stops by 28.9 percent. So if it helps at all, maybe it's something just worth exploring. On the next page. I don't know, we, we're used to the, uh, you can go to the next one. We're used to the normal yellow sign, which is a, yep, it's, on, it's the one. Oh, oh, I guess you're ahead of me, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, we did that one, right? So if you're using the flashing sign, so hopefully half the people don't go through them. All right, right there, we're used to the yellow sign sometimes. Maybe adding four way or all way to the stop signs help. I don't know what's out there now on those stop signs. It just says stop or does it say four way or all way? Just so maybe that can be something. Putting the word stop on the street or stop ahead. These are just ideas. All right, number three, crosswalks at major intersections. Again, the same three major <coughs> intersections. If I look at New Hampshire law down at the bottom, um, kind of getting can scroll down more to New Hampshire. Vehicles must yield pedestrians <laughs> close to or in vehicles half of a crosswalk. Pedestrians must not leave a crosswalk in front of a vehicle if the vehicle doesn't have time to stop. So there's ownership on both sides, right? You step off the curb, it's kind of the pedestrian at that point. Once you're halfway through, or it's the car's responsibility, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a oh, my, my computer just went. Oh, I don't have anybody call on me tonight. <laughs> well, there it goes. <laughs> All right, so this is the law that, well, you, you two are the lawyers uh, would, would know more than me, but basically well, I was asking if we actually painted a crosswalk or put one there, what's the legal, what happens? So that's what I was trying to answer here. So it looks like we can do that, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look like there's harm by adding one. What, what do you mean? Well, what happens? I'm well, I just, like right now there's no crosswalk. I, I, I misspoke at a board of selectmen meeting once because I, I had to go back and recheck something. One of my friends had to be a juror on a case of a boy that had crossed the street and was killed. It, and the woman was texting. It happened at Greeley Field in N Nashua. Is it Nashua? Mm -hmm. I thought she was still living in Tingsboro at the time. So when she told me about the case, she said this whole case came down to whether the person used the crosswalk or not. Obviously, they were going to be guilty, but it was another level of a problem if the child went through a crosswalk or just dodged across the street and he did dodged across the street he didn't use a crosswalk so i didn't know legally if what that meant to unfortunately if there was an accident to a person did Wait, they get a civil case or criminal case? i don't remember i, I I'm sure just mentioned it so it would make a difference so that's what i mean so what what are we in, so as a town we're trying to solve something by we're introducing something that we don't expect 
maybe it's a good thing to introduce this, but maybe not. I don't know. I mean, it so is that's state something that has law to be that a vehicle has to stop for a pedestrian to cross over. Right. So that's state law, and that's enforceable. Uh, it's a violation, you know, if you fail to do that. I think the case came down to whether that happened. Did it cross over? Right. I'm just saying. I, don't know if I, sure, I mean, aside sure, from innocent. that issue, it's an enforceable. Okay. It, you know, it, it, state law, you've got to stop. In fact, that, I, I remember my son was 16. He got a ticket for failing to yield to somebody in the crosswalk. Okay. So it's a, it is a violation. Okay. So and if we can put up one of those signs, crosswalk. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're gonna, it's going to look like state Christmas law. town. Sorry, when we're yeah. <laughs> All right. So not, not true. We need to balance the nature road, I guess. All right, so again, back to the yielding signs. If you look at the YouTube videos, the blinking sign that's a, that they help. This was really with the stop signs, but uh, any sign, actually. The blinking LED signs increased 80% of being able to see, you know, to stop versus traditional signs overall. So again, it's just something to look at. Here's a painted crosswalk on the next one. You know, if we're going to just... The, another reason Troy didn't just say go paint the tri tri the walks is he wanted to, if we're going to do them they wanted them legal and federal standards as well that's why he just didn't go out there with a paintbrush and stuff because I, I don't know what this means it, you know we were still fighting you can see the bottom left was a 3D one that people try to do I hear that happens and then about two or three weeks later people just drive through them <laughs> but see how it looks 3D at first uh, the textured ones I don't know if the town wants to do that. On the, I don't know if you still see that one in the yep. red one, or color it maybe. So I think we also noticed on Albuquerque on the bike path side, because this was federal money, we were questioning there are streets on the right-hand side of where the bike path is, right? Um, so there were, there were um, we want to call them crosswalks, hand-painted crosswalks mm -hmm. on the right side. And I think there was ADA accessible mm -hmm. also. And there, you had the, um, you could feel, the, you know, if you're in a wheelchair, I maybe mean, you can feel when you're coming to the intersection. Um, but I don't know why not on the other side it's not done, but maybe it's because of the bike path, and that's why they do it. So, But if we need to put one of these across Albuquerque to get to the bike path, I don't know. I'm not saying Newstead, but, again, we have to balance what we're going to do. And, again, you can write the word slow. Just I'm trying to think of how a cross ought to work. All right, I went to the school, I guess, back on April 8th. It was a rainy day. I'm across from the school. You're coming down Albuquerque. You're going to turn left into the high school. That's what you're looking at here. And you can see somebody in a silver car and somebody in a black car coming the other way. Not a problem. You can see them entering in on the second one. Uh, not a problem. You get to the third one as a problem because can you try one? Go to the next one. See how they're all entering in from both sides? Passing on the right. If there's a kid trying to walk across the street right there, they're passing on the right-hand side. See how there's two cars there? The, silver, the one behind the silver. Okay, so no problem. You can see there's a child walking in on the next one. And the school is trying to do two things very successfully, actually, with this third. There's a person, once you first turn in there, directing the traffic inside the school. You're going to see in the next slide that the bus goes by and takes a left at Talent to go into the busing on the other side. There's a person there getting them on and off the bus quickly. Okay. Um, there's also a bus that's going to park later on in this mess so people can't park on the right. So I think they know there might be an issue. <laughs> All right, so you see the child walking through. Next one, you can see how it's backed up. You can see there's a line forming to get into the school. Kids are walking in there to get to the school. Me going the other way just to show how, it's, how you, there's a lot of traffic. Next one, there's two kids on the left-hand side. It's a little blur. Actually, it's, it's somebody walking their dog and a child. <laughs> so in the morning, there's also people exercising on that road. It's a little blurry. Next, you're going to see there's a stop sign there. This is two things. Uh, can you go to the next one? So sometimes somebody will park a bus here so they can't pass on the right, number one. That's good. But see in the next one where it says end of school zone, the bus has traveled past the high school to take a left at Talent right here. See that end of school zone? That's Talent's road right there on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Kids are coming up through Talent Road and trying to take a left, and they're walking in front of the buses, and they're walking in traffic. So that's that two-way stop sign there, right? So Talent Road's here. So I was thinking maybe we can move that sign past Talent. So you're still in the school zone. I don't know. This is another legal question. 
Is that making sense what I'm saying so far? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I have no idea what that is. I guess I just took a, I just took the picture of his talent. See this next one? Was a, that just is let me know it was talent. The next one is a person who is coming up talent, taking a left. Remember the, the bus was just there that took a left in this car. So she's weaving in and out of buses to get across to the school. And the next picture shows a car taking a right as she's right there and her and the next one shows her trying to get through the traffic to get to the school. So again, we're trying to introduce crosswalks maybe near the school. This, this, I'm sorry, I should have said that at the beginning. <laughs> okay. And this is me now going the other way. You can, yep, you can do the next one. I was going back towards the school and you see two kids trying to cross the street. See them there? And then you get the next picture. I stop them and I ask them, would you like, would it be interesting if you could have a cross arcade? Do you think it'd be safe? Oh yeah, hang it up. So I don't want to show minor faces. Next one is just somebody else walking to school. Okay, we're almost done with my, what I found. All right, this again, I just think it has a school limit sign. You can do the next one. It's just more children walking. Um, I have a person in the audience who brought up a good point about the two mile radius <laughs> of the kids that walk to school at high school. Um, I understand why they do that, but the kids on the, on the side of the high school are in better shape than the ones that are not. You've got talent, you've got Sparrow, you know, you got a lot of, the buses drive by them anyway. So maybe an option would be one area. I know this contracts with schools and busing, but if the kids on the other side of the high school, all those streets can meet at one place and the bus goes by anyway, maybe that's an option to, to introduce safety. Maybe it's a liability on the town. All right, I looked at the school zone safety one. Feel free to look at it. Um, it's giving you statistics of children that, that get hurt, but the, the more important is two thirds of the drivers exclude the speed limit in schools. So this company talked about safety. Watch it in your own time about where to put this, um, you know, your 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 miles per hour and that classic two people walking across the street, which means school, which doesn't ring to me that it's a school. But so they're just telling you in the next slides, we put it 200 to 600 feet before the intersection and, you know, that kind of thing. So you can look at that later and how flashing lights help a little better. So as far as more signage to the school, yep, next one. They're just telling you where to put it so people know you're entering a school zone and where to put the sign and flashing lights. All right, so number B, more signage around a school, the do not pass might be helpful. No passing zone, no passing on the right. The hours of limit, to, you know, of time, they might have that already, I don't know, of the school zones. The speed limit is this at this time when those peak hours are at school. The flashing light would help. I do think we have an end school zone because I saw it. Um, we already talked about option D about picking the kids up at a, at a spot. A school, a painted crosswalk or a temporary crosswalk that you could just put out at certain times would also be a potential thing to do if we didn't want to paint the street. These are some items here that you could do or maybe hire a crossing guard, but they're trying to do that. Next one um, is the YouTube video just showing lighting it up again to stop so people can see even when it's dawn or dusk that, you know, if there's a school. Uh, we talked about other uh, safety measures, which would be rumble strips maybe. Uh, I don't know how that affects a snowplow on the road, if it's a tough thing or not. Is a rumble strip tough? Yeah. It won't cause a... I don't think so. All right, DMT then. uses them all the time. I don't know if that helps safety. Or, you know, I know the white line would help my safety, <laughs> but I don't know if you're over it, the line. I mean, what it does is it, it, it's safety for motorists because it alerts you if you're veering off the road. Right. Uh, and also... Uh, they're putting these now on 101 um, because people go across the center line, um, which just as a segue, Albuquerque is designed just like 101 between Wilton and, and Bedford. It's the same highway design. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know as many people cross the line, but I, <laughs> I don't know. They either hug the center line or they hug the light line, right? Yeah. I think people. I was going to say in the south part. Yeah. They're always over the yellow line. They are. Because the road goes like that. Oh. So it might be a good thing to introduce that? I don't know. And, well, people don't like it. I mean, it seems to me they 
done away with it in some sections because it's noisy at night mm. if you live next to it and people you right. hear the rumble strips. I think yeah. they did I think it was Laconia that they did away with it in some sections. So um we can, um, the other one was, you know, when we start talking about traffic calming measures of making you do turns in streets with trees or painting things red or, you know, we can have that discussion. That's in our master plan chapters. The other thing I would say is we have playgrounds on that road. The last page, maybe a second. Yeah. We have playgrounds on that road. We have a trail entrance up here and we have wildlife crossing. It might be other things. Um, and that's just our ordinance on the back. just saying that Signs must be valid in New Hampshire. We can't just make up our own sign. <laughs> you know, it has to be regulated. So that's, I, I for me, I, I haven't looked at Kate's presentation yet. I'm sure that's next, but um, I think it's enforcement. I think it's more signage, not overkill. Um, and I'm open to other ideas. So. so I think part of the problem why people pass on the right now by the school is because the road is cut out. To make it look like there's a passing area. I thought that's why it was widened like that's, that. That's so you could pass too. the trap so, because it uh, backs up. Right, well, Roland so. wouldn't let the high school open until that was installed. That was a big controversy at that because they had to invest some money to make that so people could go around. So when they were going to turn into their, their continued traffic, so now you didn't start getting traffic backed Back up. up. And, and it, that was that was one of the, the hot topics because Albuquerque's always been a hot topic. And look how many years it went uncompleted because he got voted down sometimes by as little as two votes. So you're saying them passing on the right was if they it had to do it. So now if it, so it's kind of introduced a safety issue if a child tries to cross there, which is if we put a crosswalk somewhere else, they shouldn't cross there. So, so you're so that's what we need the balance of, you know, what to do. Okay. And when that bus parks there. Yeah. It presents, I would think, a problem for anybody on Nightingale because the bus is blocking their view. Blocks the view, yeah. But yeah, they don't park like like going in and out of the street, right? But they're yeah, they're there. I think yeah, to stop so, the people from going right. I think they're countering. No, I think she just sits there till she gets yeah. going. Yeah. I thought they were trying to be strategic. No, no I think she just sits there till her duty starts. <laughs> and this is not an attack on the school, please. They're trying no. yeah. to do what, and there hasn't, I haven't heard of any big accident or any accident, but I, we just would, we were looking at Albuquerque and that just was something that came up. So, and we would include obviously the school in any of this. So well, they just made the SRO officer full time in this. Yeah. District, so maybe we can utilize that resource as a crossing guard, perhaps. It's, it's part-time. Is that a part-time? No, they, they've added a full-time position. They've well, added full -time. a part-time position, maybe full-time. My understanding of the expectation is that they would have a full-time officer at CHS with a full-time split between GMS and LMS. That's the part-time one. Okay. Yep. So reality is if the if school works with the police department, perhaps scheduling can be done in such a way that crossing could be accommodated. Yeah. That's a good idea. Well, I had a picture of a person with a crossing guard there, but I'm like, you know, well, I know the top one. <laughs> so I live on Pheasant. I live on Pheasant. My kids had taken the bus, so if you, know, it's the next street down from Talent. Buses stopped. Lights are out. Everything's flashing. People fly through mm -hmm. it. So the reality is, if they're not stopping at Pheasant, they're not stopping at Talent. So rumble strips, elevated, whatever. It really comes down to people have to care enough. So put the cop there, have them ticket people like crazy during school hours. But so uh, my concern is I think a, cross, a crosswalk is absolutely a good idea, but I don't know that it'll make a much of a difference because like I said, you can see the school from Vezin and they still drive through it. Um, so before we get too far into how to fix it, <laughs> I put together some things about what is it currently? And I know there is more history in this room than I know. Um, so I'm sure you'll be filling in some blanks, but uh, so I just wanted to go through these notes about, I started looking at the master plan, what had been written earlier and um, you know, what planning boards before us had intended and everything to um, for Albuquerque and also our ordinances. So, and we also actually just updated the transportation chapter. So we took, mm -hmm. although I, I didn't look at the previous transportation chapter to, um, 
to see the full history there. Uh, but so that's just that's where um, this information is coming from. So if Jay, if you wouldn't uh, mind, Albuquerque was actually not completed when the last that's what chapter I thought. was done. Right. Yeah. So wow. um, <laughs> that's yeah. It needed to be updated. <laughs> so. Uh, so quickly, this is the traffic counts and the level of service um, of uh, roads in town, some of the major roads in town. And you can just see that Albuquerque has about 5,500 um, cars for weekday traffic. And this is from, I'm trying to read this, 2006 to 2016. And that level of service is B, which is basically, you're going to see other cars on the road, but you're, they're not really going to affect how you're driving. It's also just interesting to note the contrast of between Albuquerque and 3A just north of Page because it's the same. The same. At that point. Right? At that point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is the, L I'm sorry, what is the LOS? Level of service. Level of service. Yeah. And what does the, the letters represent? So for B, it is, I, I didn't write out all of this because I didn't want the presentation to get huge yeah. but it's basically it's, a free flow condition yeah it's free flow but you'll see other cars around right um a would be totally free free flowing so on our and i tried to just take the excerpts that um pertain to albuquerque <clears throat> and one of the notes that we had in there was that uh even though there aren't separate counts for trucks there's been concern anecdotally about the truck traffic um particularly the section north of hillcrest so one of the suggestions in there was we may consider restricting through truck traffic from Albuquerque um, to Hillcrest and forcing those trucks to go along Hillcrest. And that was, as it says in there, that was an anecdotal um, issue, but it's uh, just something noted in the plan. Next one. Um, these are where the traffic counts were taken. You can see those small little green triangles and the one on Albuquerque is right just north of Hillcrest there. We have accident rates. Um, the accident rates are actually very low. And I believe our highest one being that 1, 1 1.08, the EPDO over M MEV, which is basically taking the accidents and it weights the personal injury accidents as three times of property damage. So just saying, even if there's about the same numbers of accidents, it's more important to look at that because it has um, personal injuries weighted in there. And in general, you want to take um, personal injury accidents as more important than just pure damage to property. And this is the crash data. Um, it's showing that most, most of the incidents along Albuquerque are really no, uh, no apparent injury or unknown, which probably means there were no injuries. The next note was um, currently the town requires minimum lane widths of 12 feet for non-arterial roads, which is what Albuquerque is, um, and which is a width consistent to the standard for most state and interstate highways, which are obviously built for larger or more than 35 miles an hour, and 13 feet for arterials, which, which are um, Charles Bancroft and 102. Uh, so in the plan we had noted we should consider reducing those minimum lane widths for the non-arterial streets to 10 feet and 11 feet. And I know that um, I wasn't able to get in contact with the fire department. So I know that that is partially why the roads are so wide. Um, and, oh no, where did my, did that not go through there? Let's slide away on here. Let me get my I wonder if I use. I want to go to the next one. I wonder if you need to re refresh or not. Do you see it on yours? I think it's in a different spot on mine. But <coughs> I can get to where we're at anyway. Um, okay. So for traffic calming, because we had noted that the road was built larger than necessary uh because it's not an arterial road according to see that yeah i think we skipped something because can you refresh on there 
on Google Slides. I think that's an older version. Hmm. Try to get out and get back in. That might do it. Maybe if I need to get out too. Because there was something about the arterial roads that I had put in there earlier. Yeah, it's missing a slide. Do I need to get out of this? Yeah, I don't see it in my deck. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that wouldn't have refreshed. Let me try resending this. You can email it to me. Well, this was in it, right? A couple back. <laughs> Sorry, right? technical difficulties. <laughs> um. All right, let me try. Sending that link, and I'm see if I can print it as a PDF. If that doesn't work, just emailed it to me. Yep, it might be taking a second. Come on, email this file. So look at, there we go, that's it. So look at slide, if you can go to slide three on that one, that's what was skipped. Start the end. Because this is where we're looking at the state functional classification of the roads, and that's where it's saying that um, Albuquerque is classified as a major collector, it's not an arterial road. Right. Meaning, um, and the state aid means that the class five mileage means um, the road, or I'm sorry, the town takes care of that. So that was just a, a note that we needed, um, needed to make. Let's see. So where are we now? Back at slide nine. It looks okay. like I So that was the only thing that, that we missed there was um, because of the state classifying it as a non-arterial road, it's actually a major connector, um, major Oops. collector. Sorry. That's what led the planning board to this should be a 35 mile an hour road, which is in our ordinance. I'll show that also later. Um, meaning that 45 miles an hour needs to be calmed to 35. So that's how we got to this point um, and why we've been focusing on traffic calming this entire time. Um, so, so there's notes in here. The speed along the major collector road has become a growing concern. Uh, reducing the speeds and providing a safer environment for bicycles and pedestrians can be accomplished through a variety of means, um, regulation and enforcement. Uh, and there's growing awareness that unless enforcement is at a near constant, motorists tend to travel the design speed rather than the posted speed. So in the master plan, we had said reducing the width or the perceived width will help change that design speed to what it was intended to be according to this mas the master plan. So now if, um, and then the next couple of slides were just a couple of images that we had um, in that plan, which was like crosswalks, um, some raised uh, speed humps and We already went over that one. Yeah, we can, we can skip that one. Um, we had said, you know, if there's extra space, if we're narrowing lanes, there may be space for a bike lane in the shoulder there. And this was an example of narrower lanes. No. No. Obviously, there wouldn't be two lanes going both ways. It was just an example of here's tight, you know, tight lanes, right? 
So um, going on about the traffic calming, additional crosswalks, whether textured or painted, could serve as a visual cue that pedestrians are present. We know they're present because of the rec path. Um, consideration is also given to reduce the width of the travel lanes um, and as previously noted, narrow travel lanes lead to reduced speeds and the addition of bike lanes coupled with more frequent crosswalks would increase the safety for both bicyclists, bicyclists and pedestrians. So that's where we had been moving before this workshop um, as a board. We had written this two years ago or approved it two years ago. Um, we have the future traffic forecasts which show that Albuquerque is going to say mostly as that level of service be, uh, and then the one intersection at um, Charles Bancroft at the north side might end up as a C, which is stable flow, but it marks the beginning of the range where operation of individual users um, becomes significantly affected by interactions with others in the traffic stream. So occasional backups, you see that at rush hour in the morning. Uh, next slide is um, there was notes about the multi-use path since residents on the side of Albuquerque opposite the path um, at any point along the roadway must necessarily cross the road. The lack of crosswalks, especially at key intersections, such as at Pinecrest or across from the high school, impedes pedestrian safety. This was a map of the statewide bicycle plan. And these were the recommendations that the board had come up with um, as we were rewriting this chapter. Um, the first one was the extension to 102, which you had mentioned. Um, consider the implementation of traffic calming measures. Uh, we don't need to read through the whole thing. Ban the through truck traffic um, north of Hillcrest and install marked crosswalks. This was a map of the recommended by school pedestrian and roadway improvements. And if you go to the next slide, it, there's, you can see the images better. You can see um, pr proposed crosswalk at Sentry, which we don't have currently. These orange circles are <coughs> the walking areas of the school. So students, oh, I'm sorry, if you go to the next, oh, if you go to the just next. Noting, one at Hillcrest. Oh yes, there is a crosswalk at Hillcrest, but it's um, three-sided. Uh, instead well, of the four-sided square. Uh, so these orange circles are where students will be walking to school versus um, taking the bus. Uh, this was around when we were trying to get that grant along um, for a sidewalk around Pinecrest. So you see there's that gold section there um, suggesting sidewalk uh, installation there, proposing a crosswalk at Pinecrest and also at Talents further south. And this was just to show the, the last bit of, um, of uh, Albuquerque towards the bottom. Okay, so then, so that was the master plan. So then um, if you can go up one, then I go to, I went to the land use laws for the road design. And we have the non-arterial road, which is Albuquerque at 12 feet um, width, lane width. And it's a collector road and that's re um, required to be 35 miles an hour. Then if you go to the next slide, this is also in the appendix. This is a cross section of Albuquerque. <coughs> it's written as an arterial street. And the note says the design speed is 45 <coughs> miles an hour. So, Everybody who's thinking it's a collector street, it's residential, it should be 35, you are right. Everybody's saying it's designed for 45, you are also right. <laughs> and that's what causes this whole issue. So this is our disconnect. Um, it's built for 45, and at least according to the plan, it was not meant to be 45. Now, as far as history goes, uh, there are probably some holes there, but that's what we have written down in our documents. Okay, so now this will this part will go a little quicker. This is, um, I took a drive north and south uh, on Albuquerque because I don't, I don't see how we can, like I would say I'd rather pack us all up in a van and take a drive down there so we can really see what we
to work on. Um, so instead I just went and took pictures of basically the, the sort of major things, speed limit signs and things. So this will go, this will go quick. So right now we're at the Southern end. Um, that's the first, the, as soon as you turn on the Albuquerque, you have a speed limit sign. You go a little further up. Sorry, they're a little blurry. It was a video, so I was taking screenshots. <laughs> um, so go a little further up. You have your uh, school zone sign uh, right before Campbell. It's got the flashing lights, like we said. It's 25 there. Uh, this is the entrance into Campbell. There is a crosswalk sign, but it's only talking about the crosswalk across Highlander Court there. You go a little further up there. There's your end of your school zone. It's just before Stark Lane. You can see is on the left. And you can see Dara Pond's sign is a little bit further in the distance. Um, this is Nesson Keg. You can see uh, this is where the part of where the path um, goes actually behind trees. And you can also see a speed limit sign in the distance there. Coming up on Pinecrest, the uh, wreck path kind of merges into the road there. Um, I don't know if that's for drainage or what, because you have uh, the stream underneath, but um, you can also see the stop ahead pavement markings. And then at the intersection, you have a bike route sign. Um, you have the all way stop sign and you can see the crosswalk um, with the wreck path, but no other crosswalks at that intersection. And then it goes on looking like an empty road for two minutes. If you're driving at 35 miles an hour, it takes you two minutes to get up to the Hillcrest uh, stop sign. Just so happened while I was driving, there was a pack of bikes here and you can see they're all crammed to the side. I just want to add one thing. I'm sorry to interrupt, but sure. the kids who walk the two miles, Pinecrest is part of that. From Pinecrest on, they're walking all those homes. Yep. That's right. Yep. So we're looking for sidewalks for them to get over somewhere. Yep. Thank you. Um, continuing our, our path I north. Because I feel like there's a stop sign. On, there's a bus stop on Pinecrest. Boom, boom, boom. At least in the winter, it's like three stops and like 20 feet. I think it's for GMS. LMS, I see walking. Um, we have stop ahead signs and pavement markings. You can also see this is where the American flags start. Um, you have the all way stop. You have crosswalks across three sides of this intersection, but not the one that we're currently at right now. Um, and you can also see actually in that that the, the path ends before you hit the parking lot into the um, for the state forest. It was just something to note. Um, speed limit sign is just after Brenton. You can see trash bags collected there for the town cleanup that was on Sunday. Uh, the next speed limit sign is just after Newstead. You can see it's in a little rough shape. And then there's another speed limit sign just after April Drive. And then you get up to the um, end. The, that's the northern end stop sign. So then we're going to turn around. First thing you do going south is you see a speed limit sign. Um, this is also the wide open area. And according to Officer Taylor at the police department, uh, this is probably where she sees most of the speeding issues. But that also could be anecdotal. Maybe, maybe she tends to sit up there. Um, this was just while I was driving, I saw the, um, the car crossing the yellow to avoid the cyclist. Um, and the cyclist was not on the path because there was people jogging and strollers and things. Uh, the next speed limit sign is right after Sentry, right before you're hitting into that curve. You have another speed limit sign just past Griffin. You have another speed limit sign and another cyclist. As you're approaching Hillcrest, you have a stop ahead um, pavement markings and sign. Again, the Hillcrest intersection, three crosswalks. Um, you can see a speed limit sign in the distance there. And this is another favorite um, officer spot, but you can see, you know, the road goes on forever and there's nothing to break up the monotony. And at 45 miles an hour, it takes you a minute, 20 seconds to get to the intersection. So now we're approaching Pinecrest. You've got a stop ahead pavement markings and a street sign. 
but you can't see the intersection at all at this point. Now you're coming up on the pine crest. You're also going downhill as you're coming around a curve and you're like, oh shoot, there's a stop sign there. <laughs> there's faded pavement markings that you can't even really see. Um, Cause I have done this before where I've been daydreaming and just it come, it feels like it comes up out of nowhere because it's so monotonous up until this point. Haven't blown it yet though. <laughs> um, Yep, always stop. Uh, there's just the one crosswalk on the one side. Now, this, I think, is the last speed limit sign going south on Albuquerque. And this is just before, this is, this is um, right after Ness and Keg, before the uh, power lines. So there's still a couple of miles of Albuquerque left, and there's no speed limit signs. Um, I'm also, at this point, this is at 45 miles an hour, and this is when I'm noticing that the road starts to feel like you're going faster because it's not so wide open um, because it's getting shady. And, and like you had said before, it starts to get it more curves hurts. in the road there. You have a school zone sign um, and the school pavement marking. And you can see the exit to the high school is just there. So I don't know what the distance is, like what a normal length for a school zone is but it seems like it's right at the end of the school's property. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's normal. It just feels kind of short. Um, heading south, you have a school, I guess it's not, <clears throat> I thought it was a school crossing sign, but Kim, you said that's just a school sign, just to say there's a school yeah, here. Yeah, it looks like someone holding a purse or something walking across. Yeah. And, but you're already in the school zone at this point. So we already know there's a school here. I think and, you might be right about the property line because remember how I said they should push it past talent? Right, but I'm not sure not on why the property. it's so close, yeah. but um, could be, you might have answered why. Yeah. So this is, and this is just before Sparrow Court, <coughs> and the school zone ends at Talent. You have this is right before the Page Road stop sign, so you have a stop ahead sign, and then this is the stop sign, which also happens to be brand new because somebody <coughs> took it out this winter, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's nice and shiny. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a horse. Yeah. And okay, so this is uh, just a couple more notes that I had. Um, this just marks where the school zone was. And one of the things to note about the school zone is most of the time we said the level of service is B on Albuquerque, meaning there's plenty of breaks in traffic to be able to um, make it across the street as a pedestrian, whether there's a crosswalk or not. What happens when you get the school zone activated is all that traffic backs up and there's no breaks in traffic for that 20 minutes or so that everybody's trying to get to the school, whether to get into school or drop off or whatever. Um, so somebody trying to cross the street, they don't have any breaks in traffic to do that. Somebody has to stop for them. And then you don't know if the person in the opposite lane is going to stop. It's just kind of like, I hope they stop. Um, this was just a note of my video times um, when I drove it at 35 miles an hour, it was 10 minutes, seven seconds. And at 45 miles an hour is eight minutes, 35 seconds. So roughly a minute and a half difference between driving the entire length at 35 miles an hour versus 45. Um, it's very rough, you know, rough numbers. This is the same thing that Kim had, it, just the um, fatality for pedestrians based on speed. So we don't have to go over that again. I uh, spoke with the police. These are our stop records for speeding along Albuquerque. Um, 2018 was probably the last normal year. There were 297 uh, verbal warnings and only 14 tickets or arrests. Um, in 2019, they lost two officers. I think one went on active duty and I think one retired or maybe just transferred. Um, then it was COVID and now 2022, they're trying to get back out there with, um, where they don't have to worry about, you know, public contact and things anymore. <clears throat> and you can also see roughly a third of the speeding stops were on Albuquerque. I didn't continue putting the data in there because that has so much to do with where the officers happen to be that I didn't know how valuable that would be to really show the entire, um, list there. Um, but there's, it definitely does show that there's ton, like a, there's decent amount of stops maybe. Um, I don't know what the normal amount of stops would be, but there are very, very few tickets. 
And then these, the next few slides are just everything that I heard talking to, you know, police, road agent, um, town administrator, uh, Facebook, um, just people in town, you know, that I know live along the road. Um, I just wrote down everything so we could vet it tonight, kind of go through. We could cross them off quickly. We can, um, we can go through, I can go through them now if we want, but um, these were just all the suggestions and I didn't want to strike any out, you know, without bringing it forward to the group. So that is pretty much what I have. I can go over what um, the road agent and the police said, if people are interested in hearing that. Okay, if you could just go to the next slide. Um, so I spoke with Kevin Brown, the road agent. He does not recommend speed humps, but he's not opposed to rumble strips. Um, he specifically said up, coming up to Pinecrest, maybe a rumble strip as a, as a stop sign coming up. Um, he'd like to see more enforcement and more tickets written. Current budget doesn't include any funds for any new signage, and um, but he will support the Willow community and the planning board and the board of selectmen. So if we came here and said we needed speed humps along the entire street, he <laughs> said he would do it, even if he wouldn't you know, recommend it himself. <laughs> so he didn't want to um, impede on anybody's you know, decision making. Uh, and the next slide is um, speaking with our police captain, uh, Scotty, the, the, he's currently applying for a grant for new radar. Um, he can invest extra overtime in his speed detail, but they're currently understaffed. So it would be overtime to uh, have people sitting out there more. Um, it's not a problem to stop more drivers because he understands the correlation between the, uh, the more stops you make, there's a lower crime rate because it, um, gives the impression that there are more police officers in town. He encourages citizens to call about problem areas and times, uh, not opposed to crosswalks at the stop signs. He said that might help um, enforce the blowing of the stop signs. Uh, speed radar signs were one of his suggestions um, and it also helps with ticket enforcement. The con to that is it can encourage people that are looking for a high score on the uh, <laughs> sign. <laughs> um, he does not recommend speed cameras, a speed trailer, or speed bumps, and lowering the speed limit um, would basically have less warnings and more tickets. Um, raising the speed limit would either shorten that warnings window, or they'd only be ticketing, doing those tickets at, instead of 55, roughly now, 50 to 55, it'd be go 60 to 65, unless they shortened that window of because they, they prefer to have warnings and, um, and things over tickets because um, for better community relations. Mm -hmm. But um, so that was the feedback that we had. They track and it's not the same person you're warning. That's another thing, right? If people listen. Right. If it's the third warning you've gotten in you know, a year, then maybe you have to do a ticket. Mm -hmm. But that was also part of it was uh, most of the time the people that are speeding are the ones that live nearby. So you end up right you end up ticketing the same people over and over and it's it can just you know be difficult when those are your neighbors so um so that was what uh, road agent and police said and then i had a, i had the list they're not in any order but i um, just kind of grouped things together of um <clears throat> suggestions by the community uh but if i don't i feel like we should probably open it up to public at this point or I don't know if we want to break out I know there's it sounds like to me there's a couple different issues there's speeding along where it's designed at 45 there's the stop signs and then there's the school zone mm -hmm. so I don't know if we want to break out into groups or address each one okay well thank you uh, both uh, presenters for, um, for providing us with that um, information um, does anybody have anything they want to? This is a workshop, so I welcome the public's input. Um, so, if anybody wants to say anything, and of course, the board is welcome to comment in as well. I will. Yes. Yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> um, like I said, it's a workshop where pretty much. 
Oh, yes. We're going to have to have a name and an address. Pat Spencer, 9 Cranberry Lane. I live at the Beverly Southern Inn. Um, the bike path itself, or the street itself, is like two different parts. You've got the north end, which is wide and not curvy, and I think that was the last part built. And then you have the southern end that is curvy. And there's a big difference along with the bike path. The southern end is sort of on Albuquerque or right against it because people go off the road and onto the bike path. Whereas in the north end, they'd end up in a ditch. So if talking speed limit, to me, <laughs> the southern end is... Definitely, you don't want people going faster. You don't want to raise that speed limit because they're going to go faster anyway. So you wouldn't want to up it and then have them go even faster. Wouldn't you be sending drivers mixed messages if you had 35 at the sun event? Well, I'm changing after the high school. After the high school, you Why would you want to do that, though? That doesn't make any sense at all. I, my, my opinion would be not to change it at all. <laughs> right. That's, just leave it the 35, but I'm just saying that there is a distinct narrow the rope down. Put the yeah, narrow the rope down, absolutely. No. <laughs> so that way, well, this. So I personally, I think it has to be asked of the community do they want traffic calming measures and everybody buys into 35 miles an hour, or is it a main thoroughfare and people want to go a little quicker? Is it because ultimately, so, ultimately, we're going to complain about everybody speeding, and the reason people speed is because they don't believe the speed is appropriate. So we either so rate it appropriately. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so is, one at a time. Yeah. I'm sorry. When you rate it appropriately, <laughs> people, and the studies are showing that when you rate it appropriately, people follow the speed, speed rules. When people don't buy into the speed limits, they ignore everything else because they don't buy into it. So why are people blowing through stop signs? Because they don't buy into the traffic rules. Why do they not buy into the traffic rules? Because we have a rule designed for 45 that people are, are is listed at 35, the people are doing 30 on. So what do people want? What is the expectation? What will the community support? Until we get community spy in, you're going to have a difference of opinion of what the speed should be. Your name? So, Carrie Douglas, 9 Pheasant Street. Thank you. So can I go? Oh, wait. Thank you. <laughs> Jim Wasn't like a two car long drive. So I live right on Albuquerque. And I know how dangerous it is. So to ask the whole community to vote on whether they go 35 or 45 is unfair to people who live right on the road and people who use that road, like bicyclists and people walking. Anybody that lives off of that road doesn't see what's going on on that road on a daily basis like I do. I drive and it other people. on a daily basis. You may basis. drive it on a daily, but you don't live on it. And I, I appreciate your so, perspective is different than mine. And the reality is, there are things that can be done, landscaping that can prevent people from coming into your driveway. So, it, so the, from the, the devil's advocate perspective is, is it fair for the community to go a lower speed limit for a few people whose yards are butted? Is it fair so, for the people yeah. that live on it to what, put yeah. up with Let's be fair. Nobody lives on it. Not a if, you I live to, on. if you went to 911, oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, <laughs> but there's not a single address on Albuquerque. There is no addresses on Albuquerque. Zero. Yeah, but we're still close. And I appreciate it. Yeah, right Mine too. Nobody is discounting your perspective or your opinion. It just people are going to have a different view and different perspective. And a part of a, a community is we have to come to some level of agreement and consensus. Well, I, I believe Tom Schofield, six pocket circle. I believe that this road has been voted on every section many times. Everybody voted. It's been paid for with 100% taxpayer dollars. They knew it was designed for 45 miles an hour. They voted. They paid for it. We pay to repave it. We continue to pave it to maintain 45 miles an hour. I think the voters have spoken over and over. If we really wanted calming measures, each and every time that we've paved the section, wouldn't we have shrunk it? Wouldn't we have made the road narrower and narrower? But if we're going to continue to make it the size of a landing strip that an airplane literally could land on, and then we wonder, I mean, if someone couldn't make it to Manchester Airport, someone's going to put down an album. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. I didn't say it yet. I didn't say it yet. <laughs> but I'm just saying that we, the voters, 
I mean, the center section that we call this the center section for years, where people used to live on Meadowbrook, they used to get all the traffic. This failed many times in the vote because the citizens didn't want to pay for it. But when they ultimately paid for it, they ultimately paid for full width. And when we repaved it, we ultimately paved it. You know, so I think that, you know, the state may call it 35, but we built it to 45. We clearly knew it was 45, and we continue to support 45. I I don't care if down by the high school it's 35. There's many roads we travel on that have increases and decreases along the way. I'm not here to advocate for any particular speed. I think tonight why I came is because we need to advocate for science. Stop all the emotions. There used to be stop signs at Nesting Keg, and the world was coming to an end when they took out those stop signs. I'm not so sure there was ever an accident there. You know, everything's doom and gloom. We can't do this. We can't do that. Well, Nesting Keg and Albuquerque had stop signs for years. I stopped there the other day, and my wife looked at me like, what are you doing? I'm, having, I'm getting old. I'm 60. I'm stopping because I'm having a flashback. I stopped there for so many years. And then they took a stop sign out, and you know what? Nothing happened. No one, no one got killed. It didn't happen. Hillcrest, right out in front of here, it took the town, the selectmen, I'm going to tell you, more than a year to get the state to allow us to put a stop sign on Hillcrest Road that we don't own. That's a state road. That was not just one morning the selectmen said, oh, let's put a stop sign there. The bureaucracy to do it. I think that happens to be a good place for four way, but I'm no traffic engineer. That's why I think the national regional planning, we should take it, take the emotion out of it and just deal with just science. What does the science tell us? Does it tell us that by Pat's house and beyond the high school, just before the horse farms 35 and the other data tells us, you know, tonight on Facebook, I saw a lot of people saying that there's vision, you got vision troubles. Well, the selectman three years ago or two years ago bought a tractor to cut back brush. The only time I've seen that tractor on the road when it was broken down <laughs> with a stop sign that no one stops at Hillcrest, I mean, at Pinecrest and Albuquerque. Why is that tractor not okay? Why aren't we peeling back those trees? Some of those stop signs, you said it, you almost didn't stop because you didn't expect to see it there. If we peel back the trees a little bit and make it so that people have a visual aid, maybe we can solve some of our own problems. We're not going to buy a track that we already own that we don't use. We, are, we just have proved no, the new no. highway guide that's going to start, I assume, July 1st. I mean, what's what's the project for these people? We, we got highway guide. We needed them so badly. It snows 10 days a year. It ices another 10 days. So 20 days out of 365 take away weekends, we get an awful lot of man time. Why are we not cutting brush? Why are we not replacing stop signs? Some of these things are so dull, you can't even see them during a bright sunny day. Never mind at nighttime when your headlights don't no longer reflect on those things. I, I just think that let's put some science behind it. Let's buy into whatever it's supposed to be and then force the living hell out of it and, and, and solve the problem. I don't see the school here tonight. We, we're all talking like it's so dangerous in front of the school. It probably is, but somehow they're working it. I, I can't remember the last time there was an accident. I'm not saying that we should wait until there is one, but why isn't the school here advocating for this stuff? If the, school, the biggest problem we have is on 3A at the Griffin School. That is dangerous as hell every single minute of every single day. You know, there's, there's just so many fish to fry. We just got to divide and conquer. And I agree with him. I wouldn't want to live on Kyle. I, I get it. I get it. But part of it is when you move next to the Hudson Speedway, you're going to expect race cars. When you move next to Albuquerque no. on a main thoroughfare, you're going to expect noise. Yeah, but I've been there 33 years. 25 of it was nice and peaceful. Yeah, I've now, been I can't years. even literally open my bedroom windows. There's so much noise. And the faster they go, the, the, more, the louder the noise is going to yeah. be. Can we have your name and address? Sure. Sorry. Elena Alba, 8 Brown Court. Thank you. I've been here 45 and there's no Albuquerque. Yeah. <laughs> well, Pat, you remember them rough oats. <laughs> What? The rough votes trying to get each section done. Yeah. It really has been really noisy. Really, and if you do 45, you know they're not going to go 45. They're going to no, go more than go 45. Faster. Yeah, and it's exactly. going to be even worse. And you're talking about construction vehicles, motorcycles. It's terrible. In the mm -hmm. north end. I don't know about the rest, but the north end it's is bad. All right, there's someone in the back. Well, I'm on three for be a circle. I don't drive up with her too much, but when I do, I drive the speed limit. Not five above, not five below. I'm a by the number of warnings versus tickets. Yeah. Every time, and the fact that it's 50 to 55 before you get pulled over and a 35, every time an officer pulls someone <coughs> over, he's risking his life to warn someone repetitively and warn them again when there's signs posted everywhere. Everyone knows those speed limits. Everyone knows there's a stop at Hillcrest, a stop at Pinecrest. 
I wish there was better enforcement. I think that's the key. And if the speed limit is raised to 45, then let's enforce it at 45. Not have people like me driving 35 when they don't get stopped unless they go 55. No wonder why people are tailgating me. Okay. Thank you. Anybody who have anything? So the yeah. only thing is... Um, I understand wanting to put science behind it, but we know that it's built for 45. So the science is going to say, because how they've set speed limits is they take the 85th percentile of the current drivers. Well, if you build a road for 45 and then you do a study and you're like, huh, can't believe that everybody's driving 45. Like, of course they are, because it was built larger than our standards. And as far as planning board goes i see it as our responsibility is not only to cars it's also to the bikes and the pedestrians and everyone else using that road it's not just a car road so so is it raising it to 45 crossing? because pedestrians have the i hesitate to say bike path because i get annoyed at, but it's um because the reality is when you look at some of those things it's assuming that pedestrians are walking along the side of the road they have a safe path. If the question is, is it the crossing of the pedestrians that we're worried about? Because that can be addressed without narrowing the street, without pinch points, without other stuff. The bikes, if you narrow the road, then I, there's less room for the bike when I'm trying to go around them and give them the three feet plus the one for every pen. Really? So you're now you're creating a bigger issue by trying to solve one problem, you create a bigger one because now we have a safety issue because now there's a smaller road space for us to both share. So I think the narrowing of the road is not the pavement, the lane widths, the paint. So changing the paint will visually narrow the road and add shoulder for the bikes to be on. But then, then stay in the shoulder. <laughs> and then now. I've come, up, totally but it's I've come up on bikes in the middle of the lane well, like space and say, screw you, I'm not moving. Awesome. So it's I, I, to me, it just seems like the road is wide enough for everybody to share. Yes, sometimes you have to cross the yellow. If we're using it respectfully, you can both share the space. You narrow it down, we're going to have bigger problems because there's less space to share. I think that's the point. Less space to share helps drivers feel like they need to go slower. I think it's what the, what the intent of the of the narrower so lanes. you're just talking about moving the white lines right. in towards the center more. you're not yes. taking pavement away you're just moving yep. the white lines and right. the other part of it is when a car goes the, <coughs> the wreck path is, is great it does not protect you from a car that goes off the road mm -hmm. so a car going off the road at 55 is a big difference than a car going off the road at 40 <coughs> or 45 mm -hmm. so to raise the speed limit to 45 and now you're basically saying 55 is fine because that's just how people work if you raise it to 45, they're gonna go 55. And then, and that's just that much more dangerous to walk along that wreck path without any physical barrier to stop a car from veering off. So it's a neighborhood. It's, no, no, it's, it's a right, neighborhood. Yeah. There are kids playing that want to get to the park on the other side of the bike path. And at 50 miles an hour, you can't barely get there at 35 with your parents. I, so that's where I still when think- When we bought the house, house, it wasn't connected. It was a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And but, it's turned into a main drag. And I honestly yes. feel that that's how it was designed to be. So the question yeah. is of the well, community, is the community see it as a main drag or do we see it as a pedestrian road with a road? So how do what this is? Yeah, but this is that we're less than 20 people. So we, what is the community as a people a show, but no, I understand that, but you need community buy-in for anything, whether it's buying it, building a school, whether it's adding roads, whether it's doing stuff. You need community support. So if the community doesn't support narrowed pinpoints, we're not going to have people slowing down. So yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. John McKibben, two women more drive as a citizen. Albuquerque was built with a 75 foot right of way because the sidewalk was put in there as part of the design. The enforcement is the issue. But I think Kim, uh, Kate has it right that the, the bicyclists who are doing 10, 15, 20 miles an hour do not need to be on the sidewalk, should not be on the sidewalk. 
So if we had bike lanes, narrow the whole view of it. But but the it's the right of way is 75 feet. That's what gives it the whole wide look of it because they wanted the sidewalk there. And that's why it's cleared so far right. from the road. Right. Okay. And that's what um Re regular roads are 50 foot right away. Pavement's still 24 feet. We did get some written comments. Yes, we did. And I'd like to take an opportunity to read those into the record. Um, get the three that came in late that I emailed. I have one from Jay Spencer. Right. Kate O'Dell. I sent typed up one for Bill Andrew uh, Marin. Uh, Bill Rodonis. Those are the three that came in late. Steve Doucette and Brian McHugh. Okay, so we'll start with Jay Spencer. Um, this is a um, <clears throat> email sent to um, the uh, planning board on May 12, 2022. Um, hi, my name is Jay Spencer from One Lock Mill Drive, Litchfield, New Hampshire. For the love of God, please train the police to use better speed enforcement tactics. The town isn't Mayberry anymore. Tactics used by NYSP and Oh, I think it's state police and Connecticut state police should be in use. Uh, hiding police vehicles in the same spots every single day just doesn't work. Everyone knows the popular hiding spots. The police should also be, quote, on the move with their enforcement since many drivers use apps like WAZE, W-A-Z-E, to report their locations. Uh, number two, use instant on radar, not constant on radar. This means officers must have a clear line of sight of suspected offenders, and then they activate their radar devices. This will leave no time to sniff out radar signals on a radar detector. Parking off access of their radar antenna with a constant on radar isn't useful for getting a reading at all. Three, equip the police with a LIDAR, that's um, L-I-D-A-R, guns. Laser is much more accurate targeting for speed enforcement and to prevent detection. Four, uh, install radar speed signs like Londonderry to raise driver awareness of their own speeds. I do not feel that raising crosswalks could be a serious safety liability for the town. I'm sorry, I do, I'm sorry. I do feel that raising crosswalks could be a serious safety liability for the town. A raised crosswalk could launch a speeding vehicle into the air, causing a catastrophic accident if they are unaware of the change. I feel the intersections of Pinecrest and Hillcrest are dangerous. There should be a flashing red overhead light at each intersection. Many people unfamiliar with our roads are unfamiliar with the stop signs, and many are not visible until it's too late if they are unfamiliar with the area. Best regards, Jay. The next uh, email is from Kate O'Dell. Um, subject, speed limit and problems. Hello. As a resident, I'm writing to express my concerns. The speed limit should not be increased on Albuquerque Ave or any of the roads in town. People already speed and don't need to be encouraged to continue. As a regular walker with dogs, I am dismayed and disgusted uh, by how many drivers regularly go at least 10 miles or more over the speed limit. It's a real safety concern for walkers, kids, animals, wildlife, bike riders, etc. Drivers often don't even attempt to slow down while driving past people walking. A lot more traffic tickets might make drivers slow down, but please don't increase the speed limits. Kate O'Donnell, 21 Pinecrest Road, Litchfield, New Hampshire. This is from Andrew Marin. Uh, this is dated May 16, 2022. Good evening, Planning Board. Thanks for your efforts in reviewing traffic calming options along Albuquerque Ave. I'm unable to attend tomorrow evening, but I wanted to put a word in to support the effort and offer a few suggestions or thoughts. Number one, collect data. data. Please collect quantitative speed data along the roadway before any calming measures are installed and afterward to gauge success, uh, i.e. 85th percentile speeds, volumes, etc. And that's in quotes. Qualitative 
uh, data is good as well, but more often is more challenging for folks to estimate the speeds they see as cars drive by. Number two, education, enforcement, engineering. These should be the primary focus and in that particular order. Number one, education means public campaigns, lane markings, digital speed signs. Two, enforcement equals increased time or budget for police to enforce. Three, engineering equals implement it. I um, I'm sorry. It might be a typo, I'm sorry. Um, Implement uh, different options. Um, I favor the option that makes a road feel smaller to more naturally curb speeding when the roadway is a large and wide, wide straightaway. You naturally get higher speeds. Uh, number one, reference. ITE has a great set of vetted measures that work. If you go to HTTP, uh, HTTPS um, dot dot dash dash www.ite.org technical resources slash traffic calming uh, slash traffic calming measures. Two budget friendly starting points, new pavement markings, make the road lanes more narrow, add painted bike lanes and painted speed limits. In quotes, please no 3D's crosswalks. It's a gimmick and not a recommended or sustainable measure. Three more costly but effective measures uh, physical road changes, number one, choker slash bumper, bump out slash curb extensions, two, median island slash bollards, three, lateral shifts, four, raised crosswalks, five, speed humps, effective, but you'll, uh, this is in quotes, effective, but you'll need a lot of them or in combination with the other measures. Thanks again for your time and all your efforts, Andrew. The next uh, email is from Bill Rodonis. Uh, this was sent May 17th. Um, I just, um, okay. That's Joan. Oh, that's, that's Joan, I, I apologize. That was, Joan had talked to, to Bill. Um, his, his comments were, any improvements um, that are made would be at taxpayer expense. Um, he would rather see better enforcement for speed control he is opposed to speed bumps. Um, he has a handicapped van that cannot handle speed bumps. And the last, oops, I'm sorry, not the last, second to the last, um, Albuquerque traffic. This is from Steve Doucette, um, May 12, 2022. Hi, I'm just writing to give my input on the traffic, quote, problem, close quote, on Albuquerque Ave. These are just my opinions on a few of the ideas that have been introduced. As I see it, there will always be a problem with people speeding. It happens on every road around town every day. In quote, speeders are going to speed, close quote. Stop signs will always be blown by those too self-centered to care slash or notice. Anyone familiar with the road knows the signs are there. If they are truly going through them knowingly, then police presence is the only potential deterrent. <coughs> Increasing the speed will only make it more, quote, acceptable, close quote, to go even faster, i.e. 40 is okay right now with the speed limit set at 35. Increase it to 40, then 45 to 50 will be okay, close quote. The road is only six miles long. Increasing the speed limit will not get anyone to their destination fast enough to make the increased speed worth the risk. Quick math, not taking into consideration the stop signs, 35 miles an hour would take 10 minutes end to end. 40 miles an hour would take nine minutes, one minute. Raised crosswalks, speed bumps, in quotes, are probably one of the worst things to try to solve this problem. If someone not familiar with the road hits one at any type of traveling speed, the results could be very serious to them and anyone on the bike path at that time. Adding things to make the road appear more narrow would also not help. As I mentioned earlier, speeders are going to speed. Quote, I see it all the time on talent and pilgrim, close quote. Parking one of the police patrol vehicles randomly along the road regularly, uh, in quotes, with, with or without an officer would by far be the best deterrent to the speed issue. Many people pay for their own actions instead of potentially making taxpayers pay for the actions of a small few. Thank you for taking the time to read my thoughts. Sincerely, Dave Doucette, 115 Talent Road. And last, 
Uh, Brian McHugh, 11 Newstead Street in Litchfield, New Hampshire. Um, first and foremost, please don't consider putting bike lanes on a road that has bike paths. I propose speed dips, uh, quote, I believe easier on snow plows and rumble strips coming up to stop signs at Pinecrest and Hillcrest, close quote, assuming they don't create excessive noise for the neighbors. Do we have a current vehicle count for Albuquerque versus 3A? That's a question. Thanks, Brian McHugh. And those are the written comments. So. Um, Jay, do you have any comments? I know uh, maybe... Uh, I mean, add? just in general, I, I think this has been a, you know, a, a really great conversation. I think we've had really good input, which is really nice to see. I, I, I know only 20 people in the room, but, you know, honestly, for us, this is really great to get <laughs> this is. many people here <laughs> and, you know, to get Thank this you. kind of written input. Um, obviously, there's a lot of, of you know, different points of view out there. Um, I, I think we've had some really good suggestions. Certainly, I, I've got my thoughts. There are recommendations that are in the master plan. Um, but I, 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 you know, at least from my perspective in hearing this, I, I have a sense that this is a conversation that we really need to continue because there really are a, a lot of different views. And um, I'm not sure what another workshop should look like right off the, off the cuff, but that's kind of my sense is I, I think it would be helpful to get more input um, and, uh, you know, to, I, I think probably all of us would walk away from here and probably drive Albuquerque again, mm -hmm. uh, maybe with a little bit of a different lens. Um, and then I am thinking, um, that having some of the information that we've, we've talked about the videos that, that were raised, I, I think could be helpful. And, uh, there was a, a comment made about the, uh, in one of these comments about the ITE measures that are recommended, mm -hmm. I think it'd be very helpful to to go through uh some of those as well so these are just some of my thoughts off the cuff do you think us um like um doing some sort of a survey might be helpful uh, I, I you know I, yeah i i guess i i, I do think that'd be helpful i've been mulling that over in, in my mind but I, I think a survey specific to albuquerque I, I i think would make a lot of sense um you know obviously there are literally thousands of people driving Albuquerque who um, are, are, despite whatever efforts we may have, are, are not going to come to a meeting and they're not going to send an email. So I think I think a survey could be very effective. Uh, and it's an opportunity to talk about some of these different measures. Uh, at the same time, having some educational materials out there so that people understand what these are, because a lot of these are, you know, people don't necessarily have a frame of reference. So if... We, uh, if um, we have something to be available on the website or uh, that people could access or some links that people could go to would be very helpful. Can I make a comment? Sure. One of the pictures was the crosswalk with the red in the middle. Mm -hmm. Nashua does that and I can't see them. <laughs> but, yeah. I would never go with the red. The white is fine, but the red is... And we have to think of our town growing, our population is going to grow. Mm -hmm. So we have to think of these measures as you know more people going to Albuquerque. We also are projecting a 20% increase in overall traffic volumes on Albuquerque. As I listened to it and, and I've read some of the postings on Facebook as much as I could <laughs> deal with, um, it, it does seem like it's an enforcement issue. I agree with Joan, um, which that could be addressed now. I mean, some of the worst concerns are the high speeds, the aggressive driving, the reckless driving. They're all motor vehicle violations. In some cases, they're crimes. Mm -hmm. So, and we don't put that stuff to a public vote. We say it is against the law to drive recklessly and to endanger people. And if you do, you should get arrested and you should get prosecuted. So, and if the police are not doing that, then shame on them. They should be encouraged. And this is really not a, I don't think a planning board issue, it's a board of selectmen issue. The police department should be encouraged to be more uh, aggressive in the enforcement of the laws that exist. Now, whether or not there were other things, and there were some very good suggestions I thought tonight about 
uh, other things you could do to encourage people who might blow through a stop sign because they didn't see it, you know, or th that they were mindless driving. But I think if, if we dealt with the, the, the really offensive drivers, and I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I walk a, a neighborhood, so I live off of a, a 3A in Snowdrop, and Snowdrop is a, is a, is a cul-de-sac. I, I walk my dog at night, and I walk my dog in the morning, and I take my life in my hands sometimes. And there are people who live in that town, who live on, live on that street, who drive recklessly, dangerously, who probably should be arrested and prosecuted for what they do. Uh, so if that's the problem, then then we can do that now. I mean, as, and we can't, but the Board of Selectmen can certainly do that now and say, we need a higher level of enforcement by the police department in Litchfield to stop these high speeding, reckless, dangerous drivers who are who are uh, following too close. If you follow too close and you're, you're, you're behind somebody, that's that's a motor vehicle offense. It's under the state code. And any police officer could arrest that person or could cite that person and bring them in. And so if people say, well, they won't stop doing it. Well, if they get so many motor vehicle violations, they lose their license. And if they drive uh, after so many, they get classified as an habitual offender. And if they drive as an habitual offender, they go to jail. So, you know, maybe that's a, a, a start. I think we should still talk about some of these other issues. But without enforcement, we're just wasting our time here, I think. I agree. Yeah. Well, it's like we need even on three. They did instruct the police, and, and I'm on that road a lot. And I think that might be one of the comments where they park at the same place all the time because mm -hmm. they're much more visible in the past six, 40 days, 30, 40 days mm -hmm. than they have been in the last 20 years. Yeah. So there has been, I, I, I Kim may remember, but there was a, there was on, there was a verbal, I think Scotty was here or something. And there was a verbal, you know, and he they said, were a lot more visible. He said he's going to do anything that we request that comes out of here. He will work with us. Then they need to get off of 3A and get onto Albuquerque. <laughs> I've seen it all week long, yeah. last two weeks on 3A. Well, don't get too good. far off 3A. <laughs> <laughs> Down this way. Because... 3A in some ways is worse. Oh, yeah. I got to say yeah. it's 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 yeah. worse. Um, I'm gonna suggest too that if they have the time to write over 200 warnings, they have the time to write some of those as tickets. They don't need overtime yeah. mm -hmm. to issue more violations. Right. It's certainly a conversation that I think. Um, that the board of selectmen should have and the police should have and that, right it is an enforcement issue um, and i think the school bus thing you pointed out in pictures the pictures when they become the school bus company's job be blocking traffic you know what i mean right. that's that can't be legal no. i mean the police the bus company doesn't have any special powers so those those yeah. violations that you saw should be brought to the police department the school bus people should be coached that they shouldn't be you know they're not the enforcers they're a freaking school bus driver that's right well i think part of it too is the school buses I try to tie my stuff so I avoid them. But the law, as I understand it, is if some so many cars stack up behind a bus, the bus is supposed to pull over. And there, that's not happening. Yes, it is. It's like five. Uh, I'd like to see that. Story. I we could find it because <laughs> I, I I don't I, think that exists. I especially if this if they stop with the lights flashing to let. No, children. they're not. Like if you are going to. So there is a there is an RSA that says that they have to be cognizant of everybody else and not back up too many cars. So if that rule was actually applied, perhaps people would get less frustrated. It's, it's a two-way street, really. It's, there's give and take. I'm not saying that they shouldn't do their job, but I'm just saying that when you have 25 cars behind you on some of these streets, it, the natural reaction is you're going to get road rage. It just is what it is. Yeah, I didn't see that. That the picture I took of a lot of traffic wasn't. They weren't behind the bus. They were just trying to turn into the school. Yeah. One of the but if you have seen it, yes. The pictures you had didn't you, they show the buses going in the main entrance? No, they go past the main entrance. It'll, the school's on the left, and they go up to Talent. They okay. Take them left. I was going to say that's what I thought they were supposed to do. Yeah. And they do. They 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 are controlling it internally. There's more people on the outside trying to get in. Yeah. 
And I certainly, I think, it <clears throat> goes to the discussion. I mean, we've been talking about 3A and what the impact of that is going to look like in, in 10 years, 11 years. Um, well, certainly that is going to have an impact on, on Albuquerque, I would imagine, yep. uh, most likely. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, obvious. So um, I think that, you know, maybe taking into account not only 3A, but also the roads that sort of um, affected or impacted well, I mm -hmm. can't work it could be something to look into as well. You know, I don't know if that's yep. with the board of selectmen. If they're, you know, looking into that, that might be something for them to look into and for us to look into in terms of calming measures or whatever, how we're going to, uh, to do that. So. What is that road that you call it? Artillery. What, what's that, that road? Artil what, what, what's Arterial. What's Arterial is, and it's Charles Bancroft and 102. Are the only okay. ones in town. Like, didn't we have a discussion that Albuquerque was turning into that or is close to turning into that? In terms of volume, yeah. So does that mean? Because what happened was when that final northern connection was made, mm -hmm. um, traffic shifted off of 3A onto <laughs> Albuquerque. Right. And so that, that's why it's right now it's in tandem in that middle section. Right. Um, that between, different? now because it, now it doesn't mean it doesn't mean versus. necessarily different rules because the state hasn't classified it any differently but um at this point mm -hmm. the rules aren't different you know, and if there is an interest in pursuing a survey i'd be certainly you know happy to um drop up some potential questions for the next i think time. it would i think it would be beneficial and i think certainly from my perspective, I mean, in terms of getting a sense of the community and what people are thinking. I mean, we obviously we have people here tonight, but, you know. I'm wondering what kind of questions on the survey are we thinking, are we looking like, are there specific measures that we want to ask? Are you for or against? That's what I was thinking, yeah. Maybe do you think, like, this group can at least put together those questions mm -hmm. so that it's... Maybe we can at least come to a consensus of what questions should we ask mm -hmm. so it's not done in a vacuum. I hope one of them is how often do you travel Albuquerque? Because there's some people that probably never use it out. Yeah, so they might. That's a good so point. If you go 50. <laughs> do you about it? Right. Do you live on it? You know, do, yeah, do you about it? Um, and, and then I think definitely some, looking at some of these different measures that we talked about, whether they whether they're aware of them, whether they support them. Um, and also, I, I clearly, the speed limit is obviously an issue of concern. I feel bad if you would know it. I mean, you know, that, you know, maybe we can do something with tree. I don't know what you can do with these four people. I mean, I don't care if the speed limit's 50, as long as people can get across safely. Right. Make it 50, but how can they, how can kids get to certain points? Well, and, and those are additional oh, questions. Oh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess right, no, I'm, saying, I'm not. I'm, you can close all the roads off all I care, and I'll go down the other way. <laughs> That's another there, solution. Yeah, but are there certain? Sorry, go ahead. That becomes a mm. concern for. I walk down right. the south end, and right. <laughs> I've seen them go off the road. I've seen <clears> one go off the road right by the high school, drive down the path, and come out on Woodhawk. And you right. mentioned we have on, on my side of Albuquerque, there's a wider strip. That's right. You're going to run us down. I'm looking over my shoulder as I'm walking this, yeah. unless there's a dip there, you know, but most of it is even with the road. They can kill you. Can they we, can't control the car. That's the issue if it's a problem. Enforcement, yeah. enforcement, enforcement. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm going to say. There. Maybe you just start there first and see if there's any change. <laughs> I'm not sure that speed limit is a subject for a public referendum. I think the issue is safety and the science uh, that goes with what is a safe speed on this road, given the use of the road, given the fact that there is a path, a pedestrian, I don't know what we call it, but multi -use path, a pedestrian path, but we encourage people to, to, to go there and to walk that road. So, you know, if we said to the town, you know, what do you think the speed should be, 50, 70? And they'd say, yeah, we think 70. You know, <laughs> who in their right mind would say we should do 70 because the people in Litchfield voted for it? Nobody would. I thought it was because it's not, it just wouldn't be safe. It wouldn't, it, it would make no common sense to be safe. I 
probably don't have a life, but I watch your board meetings all the time. And you guys, <laughs> not uncommon people have to ask for a waiver not to do a traffic study because you want traffic studies. All I'm saying is if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Let's do it for ourselves. If it's a town that needs to do their own traffic study, that's what I meant by science. Yeah, yeah. Is if I came here to do a development and you thought there was some conflict, you would be requiring me to pay somebody to do a traffic study. So I think we should just do for ourselves what we would force anybody else to do. Well, there's that. If, it, if the standard is 85th percentile, what is that? Just at least as a reference point. Is it 37? Is it 42? What is the 85th percentile? And then we can discuss from there. Maybe we're already where we need to be. And everybody can just be quiet because 35 is it. But we don't know that. Because... Well, I think it's backwards because that's the traditional way of doing it. But is that what what we want that road to be? Because according to our road design standards, it's we want it to be 35 miles an hour, except for that drawing that was done in 1994. Is that when it was <coughs> finished? Oh, God. Or when was that that it was fully finished? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure when more recently than that when that you know drawing came into play, mm -hmm. but it did not jive with the ordinances. So something got disconnected there, and that's what 85th percentile is only looking at. What's the road designed for? It's not looking at what do we want the road to be. Sure, but if 85th percentile, which we have 40, we have how many accidents for somebody that's seriously hurt? It, it's not just the numbers are indicating that whatever is for the most part it's generally I don't believe those numbers because I've seen people hauled away at my intersection in ambulances. So the number is really low on the numbers. chart that was provided. <laughs> so what I'm saying, all I'm saying is you can think it should be 35. I can think it should be 45. Apparently we're both right. So where does the, the community fall on? Do they want the 45 or do they want the 35? Because the reality is speed's already telling you the answer there. The speed that people are traveling already tells you. No, it's the speed that it tells you people are what impatient. it's designed That's yeah. the speed telling you. Yeah. And they were no, already I, going too fast, exactly right. so you don't want them going fast. What, what I can look into, though, is whether or not we can get actual speed data, because I know we do have actual <clears throat> speed data for a number of roads. I could see whether or not we get, can get actual speed data for Albuquerque. I, I'm not trying to interpret the data. I'm just curious, as, what is it? Let's have a conversation based on numbers. That's all I'm asking for. And I just, and that's what I'm saying is that the, we know what the numbers are and it's designed to be faster mm -hmm. when we're not, I'm not convinced that that was the intent of it. See, see and I am, I, I believe that it was meant to be a north-south thoroughfare and they built it that way. And now we're trying to restrict it to what we want it to be. And I also it's think so that pedestrian and bike traffic. Um, well, that pedestrian bike path was funded designed. by the federal government. It had to go through loops and leaps and bounds to make sure that the road in which it was serving had to be safe. I don't think the federal government gave us all that money. When that was first built, there were stop signs and all those little signs yes, you showed. I remember. There were millions of those. And as soon as the federal government signed off on the money, Roland down. went and took all the signs down. There were stop signs for every walking path. Yes. Were, the whole thing was just littered. I mean, littered with signage <laughs> that all is probably in the highway ride somewhere. It, it, there were all mini versions of everything. Every single thing you showed times 10 was on that bike path. You drive down there at night with your headlights. It was like it was glow in the dark, right? So maybe, right? Yes, right? I remember that. So maybe we actually already have the signs. <laughs> <laughs> but we waited until we got our, <laughs> we got our federal money. They signed off once the money was gone. And everybody said, where did all the signs go? <laughs> so the federal. The walking uh, path said it needed all the signs. Is that oh, what absolutely. you're saying? We have them. There's pictures. I'm sure when they dedicated the bike path, there's pictures. There's got to be history somewhere. And truthfully, I bet you those signs really are somewhere. So that's why did they come down? Because they, they were, were just, obnoxious. They were obnoxious. They were, people were stopping because they didn't know if the stop sign was serving the I bicycle path. That. They didn't know if the stop sign was serving. I stopped. The <laughs> I remember that. Which stop sign is that? Yeah. So they took them down because it was They're it was actually easy. causing a hazard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the signs were for the wreck path, not for the road. Yeah, right. But they yeah. Were okay. yeah. Oh, it was just mini versions of everything you had, <laughs> yep. and they were brand new, so your headlights would hit them. And I'm telling you, they were overpowering the ones that you were supposed to be looking at. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. So, so nobody brought up traffic lights. 
That was not a community suggestion. There were other places we could start with that before we get to. Speaking of those blinky lights, the school. I mean, does that count as a traffic light? Well, besides speed limit, should we discuss the other issues, like the like the crosswalks in the school zone, or anything like that, or should we save that for a next workshop? Stop signs are pretty. It's all together, yeah. right? Or the stop signs. Like, how can we increase the stopping at stop signs? <laughs> I mean, some of the suggestions, it, you have a different kinds of signs. Mm -hmm. I don't know how expensive they are, but they look like they're solar, right? And they have some lights. On the, I, I mean, I don't yes. think anyone would care if the light was a little... I think, little, you, kind honestly, of nice. I think you should have some kind of light. Because I... I don't know if you, they, I haven't seen them around here, but where I grew up, they have some of the ones, the red lights that have the strobe in them, because at oh. certain times of day, you can't see red very well, yep. and in certain angles. So by having some light, and actually where I grew up, that's why they moved away from red fire trucks, because some people can't see them. So now they have yellow. So it's a matter of, if the color of red stop sign is more, is difficult to see and blends in with autumn foliage, get something that gets a little more of a yeah. punch. Yeah. Does the town have those mobile things you see on the side I've that, that tells you the speed limit is this your I saw, I saw you it one doesn't have expensive what is that there is was that, one on Albuquerque right is Wasn't that there like a there's probably really good is there? that something that you could I wonder if that's something that you could Bottom. get a lease from the like transportation the police was against those I think that was one of your notes wasn't it that was they were against is, um, a camera taking a picture no, um, we also had design. an issue with the trailer because rodents get into them and eat the wires. They're probably right. way so oh. Some of these solar signs, it was, was a radar. Right. It would just tell you what you're doing and right. what signs. So, so, and I'm not saying that you would you would keep it permanently. I'm saying just as a an occasional time, right. you know, no, to, to put those put those out and just to see if it has any effect on the overly aggressive speeders and 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 maybe it makes it it makes them. I mean, I know when I drive and I see that, that I'm more conscious of my speed. Max Apples in Legendary on 128. I, 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 every day I'm slowing down. Right, 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 right. And I think some of them, it's like they have a blue light that goes off on the top. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> some of them say like, shame on you or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. Faces so good. Yeah. They could write your own message. But I don't know if there was, if it was a way to just to get that or to lease it from borrow. the Department of Transportation or to borrow it. Or something, anything. Yeah. yeah. It just I, has I to be know. rodent proof. That was the that yeah. was the police issue. Slows me down. If I'm doing forty and a thirty-five. I'm like, oh, bad enough, you know. Right. That's yeah. a nice way to check my speedometer. I'm like, oh wow, my speedometer is reading a little low. <laughs> that was also why they said they um they're not they don't necessarily jump to ticket somebody going 40, 45, yeah. because your own speedometer might be off five miles an hour. So they're not yeah. trying to pick every single person going forty or I'm sorry, thirty-eight miles an hour off the road. So, in the school zone, um, you know, at the at the the Griffin School on Charles Bancroft, right? They have the in the morning they have the school zone sign, mm -hmm. and I drive that every day. <laughs> uh, and but and I can I can say most people slow down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do not see a lot of people that zip through there. You know, some don't, but. But the vast majority of people do, and you know that's. I don't think that's a huge investment, but it may be something at the high school or, at you know, I, I that they have the flashing they do at the high school. I think the bigger thing is, and they and people do slow down because um, they're almost forced to because of all the traffic turning into yep. the high school. Yep. Um, but I think something that we could address sooner than later is crosswalks in that school zone yep. because it yep. is a safety yep. hazard. Like we are honestly just lucky right. that nobody's gotten hit so far. You saw them walking in between there the, the buses. So yeah, right. I mean, that seems also, that seems like a no brainer to me. It's that big of a deal. The school zone sign in front of Campbell is just you're almost like you're oblivious to it because it's always flashing whether it's three in the morning, three in the afternoon, like they don't sink it or something. It should, it should be the hours that it's supposed to work. It should come on and the hours that it's not supposed to you drive the idea right now, the odds are that thing's flashing and there might be a basketball game going on, but I mean, it's not school zone time. Right. Yeah. Those signs, you oh, can program the times. Time. Yep. Yeah. Crosswalks are just paint. 
Right. See, I mean, that's, that's low barrier. That's my concern there. Like, I think it's a great idea for like you maybe ticket enforcement, but I literally live one street down, and they don't stop some people. So if they're not stopping at my street, and you can see as you come because the bus <coughs> the lights flashing, a painted crosswalk's really not going to do much. So right, but maybe that's a place where <laughs> we call the literal police and say you need to spend a little time out there. Right. And pull over, especially if those are the people who live there, and pull over a couple of people for wanting a stop sign. That's, well, by the way, well, we don't know that. We don't. I, I've seen the people, <laughs> going, right, the people going north, south in the corridor. So, so it's a matter of, yes, yeah. enforcement is good. It's a much more serious offense if you so want to. My only point is, I don't think settling at a crosswalk is going to solve the problem. I think that's a good part of the solution, but I don't think right. that can be the solution we rely on because. It may help you when you write the ticket because, hey, you weren't kid was in the crosswalk in the school zone. Boom, boom, boom. But you got something to get actually the cop there, you know, the the resource officer, something else to get the attention because that's the, the add-on ticket, but it's not going to be the one thing that stops them. The oh. Solution to what? Because Boy. like when you're driving down Main Street in Nashua, you are looking for those crosswalks. Right. Right. Like, we need a solution right, but to But everyone in Macy now has those flashing lights to get your attention. Those are fine. Right, but you're, even before those were installed, right, you, you still were like, I know there's going to be a crosswalk every 30 feet. I got to look. Agreed. So if you're driving through this school zone, it's just an extra thing to watch out for. And maybe the first few days it needs some extra enforcement. But day to day, it's not. I would much rather have it be day to day. You know, people are actually paying attention and cross and let the students cross versus they sit there and you just watch. And you wait and see, okay, there's going to be four or five cars that just drive yeah, past the right. pack of students that's like, I'm going to be late for class in three minutes because right. I can't get across the road. Right. So is that something that we can... So like, I think we're saying the same thing. Things, you know, that we can say, let's start with these. Yep, I guess so. And then continue. And I, I think, too, you should have, look back to the comment earlier. Talk to the school. Because the reality is, why are there limits on people, on the distance from the school bus traveling, Right. It's because at one point in time, buses were probably over capacity. Odds are now the buses have capacity. So as you're driving past the kid on talent, why can't they just jump on if there's room on the buses? Right. In, the past yeah. of that, it, in the past, the buses were packed full. So we didn't want to add to the capacity. But if we have nine or seven or whatever it is, half empty buses, we should be able to accommodate 10 kids. I'd also be concerned about the bus route time because well, it's already still, it's like to talk to 45 school. minutes. But, yeah. it, you know, you're still going to have kids that are going to want to choose to walk. And the fact is, if you, if there's a, if there's a designated crosswalk and there's a child crossing and you blow through that, mm -hmm. uh, again, a, a matter of enforcement and, and that's a more serious offense, right? So if you find yourself in front of the uh, district court in Nashua answering to a judge, about how you blew through a, a, a school crossing with a child there, you know, you may think twice about it. And so it's part of just, again, trying to to get at the, the people that break the laws. And I'm not disagreeing with you. My only point is you get that one person. It doesn't necessarily going to solve a greater problem. There's a big problem at that intersection. Addressing it one at a time as you right. go through the court system, it's going to take a while. But if you have the... The crosswalk, which so you have your add on, but there still needs to be something else there. That's all I'm saying. I, I think you need something that works in conjunction with the crosswalk. But this, try it first. Yeah, at least right. I mean, but, but start with crosswalks yep. that are, that are yep. visible. And I mean, I, I would seem that's relatively inexpensive. Well, we just have to decide right. where to put it. Like oh, I, I'd also just say from different roads. And Pinecrest is another obvious one. There yeah. should be a crosswalk right. at Pinecrest. But I mean, wouldn't the police be the in the best position to make those kinds of recommendations Somebody to us? Should, the school's ending soon. When does school actually you know, end? School, between the school between the schools and the police yeah. to say, you Somebody know, these are the places observe. we think that and they do it by observing it. Yeah, that's what I really I'm mean, uh, talk about. Yeah. You know. Just for, even if it's just now temporary and then after the study, it may, maybe it's five feet over, you know, whatever. But, but it's, it's, it's yeah. an opportunity to have an experiment, right? They, the weather's nice, kids are walking. Now right. want, try it. Um, let me just look at, I just want to look at the streets because I did this. I watched it and I looked at where <laughs> backed up, where the traffic backed up. To. Stark and Sparrow, right? Stark, Sparrow, and Talents. Talents tough. Are definite. Talents tough, but you got a stop sign. 
But I think getting input from the police department and the school yeah, department I'll, I'll does make sense. That's that, that, that would be reasonable. So maybe what nothing I take away from tonight. And what? No, no, not what? That's a question. You know, I mean, it's like so. I think what. Oh, I think I think a survey might be appropriate. Um, I think maybe getting some more input from the police, or maybe yeah, we'll, I'll take that and look at that. Um, if there's any data, if there isn't, and, and see what that is, and then come back and to do another workshop, and um, you know, look at those things and see um, what we can uh, come up I, with. I don't think we need data from the police to no. at least say just at Sparrow and Stark. Yeah. Okay. And crosswalk and talent. I, I think yeah. so, but, um, cause mm -hmm. there's no stop sign across Albuquerque. There's only the stop. It's right. Two way. Right. Okay. So those yeah. are the ones where you can sit and watch the traffic back up. And yeah. Okay. So I don't, Stop okay, I've done the observing. Let's, let's, All right, let's stop, let's, that's fine. Let's, let's start well, with that. Let's yeah. Say, Wait a that's a yeah. crosswalk. Right. We could, uh, you know, that could be like a like sort of like a pilot. Yeah. So we don't have a liability. Yeah. yeah. Kind of let that. Maybe that school resource officer could stand on the corner when the school starting and just. I will talk to them about that too. <laughs> you know, and just do it a couple of times, and that might. Right. And maybe because the school isn't here tonight. I showed you pictures of two different days. What time was it at night? I have the peak morning. I don't remember. Did you do the? Oh, for the um, when school went out. Oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do that offline. We'll get that. So what I'm saying, I just, I just don't know what else they're going to see. Thanks, James. Okay. Have a good night. Have a good night. Have a good night. Don't know what else they're going to see. Thank you very much. Some of them, because when I walk. Right. All of a sudden, eight thirty or nine, you'll see a bunch of <laughs> the kids driving themselves. Um, I just, well, I guess we can get yeah buy-in from police, but I, I just don't see what else they're going to see. Like it's going to back up. Well, the same I mean, way that it backs up. I think the question is like, which side do you want it on? Do you want it on the south of Talon? Do you want it on the north side of Talon? Yeah, I think you they know, need to. Where know. specifically yeah. do you want them to cross? So from there, if you want them to go up 10 feet and then cross. Like, so, yeah, look, where is a good crossing point? So. Yeah, that's what we'll have them do the observation. Right. So, and then the school has an educational side to that, too. Once right. it's installed, the school's got to say, hey, guys. So I think a discussion with the school might be. Yeah, that was, they're handling it, but we just want to prevent a problem. Okay. Well, it is a, it's a scary situation for those kids. I've driven past them in the afternoon and in the morning walking down Talon. I can absolutely understand how parents would get concerned and nervous. So it's not. Do you have any history, Tom, of Albuquerque? I was told today, I had a call that had nothing to do with this, <coughs> that when the old center of town was on 3A, Albuquerque was proposed to the town and voted for because it was supposed to take the traffic off 3A to come to the new neighborhoods this way. I think that's it some really of what has, but the problem is our traffic volume doubled, so it doesn't. We don't feel the, the if Albuquerque was nearby, what three A would feel like. Right. So I think the end result is it all happened, but our town exploded too. So yeah. Um, I'm just trying to understand the history of it. So it was to get the traffic off of three A, so they because everybody was moving. Face of three A is like an old paved cow path. It really has no design to it. It has no drainage to it. it is I mean, it's the most dangerous road in the world, and we were sold on that that it was gonna. Come, you know, right down the center of our town so we could use it to go, you know, and at least farms, north and south. And let the farms keep farming. We we're trying to get it off the road. Correct. So how come it was done in stages then? Because the taxpayers were afraid that if they built the road, they would come, they being the houses. Their people's attitude were, if we're opening up this land and they can develop this land and sell these houses, let them pay for the damn road. And this center section, Roland has, he was a visionary. Penichuk wanted to put a water main and Roland went to them and said, someday there's going to be a road there. I'll make you a deal. You cut the entire trees, you stump it, you make it all basically shovel ready, and I'll let you put your water main through. Otherwise, you're going to go around the neighborhood through the mulberry bush. So that road, <laughs> we used to drive that road before it was a road because it was it was gorgeous, you know. But that failed at town meeting. We, I believe one year we actually had a town meeting in July to try to override the no that we got in March, <laughs> you know. And it was just... 
you know, it took forever to build average purity. And that's why I say the science, because this chunk of 35 makes sense. So 35, and, but then eventually we connected the dots. Now does 35 still make sense. Now we obviously know she proved that they built it for 45. We're calling it 35. Do we settle somewhere in the middle? I don't know, you know, but 3A, I can just fathom if we didn't have Albuquerque, what the heck would 3A be like? What was built first? Because it's Albuquerque's near the high school. Then there was an Albuquerque now in the Newstead, but it was never connected to 3A. And then near here, the town hall with the pink house, you could never go across Albuquerque. Then. Right. So we what had, was built first? Cranberry, I think. Down I think the area, yeah. down the, the yeah. down up. Because those houses went in at that time. From the horse farm to Nessing Keg, that was like a mogul, like you were at the Cape and the Dunes for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we used to take the forestry truck for the fire department because there's always fires and stuff out there. But, you know, this literally was built in chunks. I mean, that road, I don't even know how many, you, you might remember. I mean, it took, took us forever to get, I mean. Well, like I said, when we, we were married in 78, it wasn't there. Right. When I moved in, Pinecrest Road was dark. Yeah. It was, it was mutually beneficial because it opened up land for development. So the developers were willing to build it mm -hmm. and it just took a long time because it was section by section, but most of Albuquerque was developer built. But right. you might tell based on the little, little How come loops? it never connected to 3A? You know, like <laughs> when I moved to Newstead, we couldn't get out to 3A. You had to go Because to they Bob didn't have, there wasn't development up there to justify building it. So that's the piece the town had to build. Other than Westview Drive right over here, People finally got convinced that there really was not going to be any development on this middle section. Finally, they stepped up and voted for it. And then as soon as they did, of course, the naysayers were, well, now we're getting Westview Drive. We never would have gotten Westview Drive if we didn't build it. You know, So there was a little bit of everybody being right, but the majority of the road has never been developed. That center section right there, you know, thank God. But those people in Meadowbrook, they had them. Talk about these people with noise. Those people in Meadowbrook, that was That's awful. the way you went. That's the way you went. Yeah. Even to go to the dump. So I just didn't know if it was by design or it was, nope. it was in tandem nope. with the it population. Tooth well and nail. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It was well planned, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was. Yeah. It was a lot of thinking ahead. It really was. I mean, I drive in many towns, many roads. I didn't think of any center of any town that has not a single driveway. And I like the fact that we as a community made sure that Campbell High School is on Highlander Court. And that this is on Liberty Way. We didn't break the rules for ourselves. Back to what I said earlier about having the um, follow our own rules. We, you guys as a planning board made people do traffic studies or get a special exception not to. I think same thing with us. I'm glad that we for the fire station, we for the police station, we for the high school. I'm glad we were respectful enough of our own community because it's hard to do what the goose is doing. You know, that's what I think we should do. And but Albuquerque took. I mean, I have to go back and look, but it. And I've been here, like she said, for a long time. And in that part down by the horse farm, that was forever. That took forever to get that one done. Um, by stock lane and stuff. It was, but it's a pretty neat street. It is a pretty street. So you want to balance safety with yeah. keeping the beauty of it yeah, and the functionality. How much road safety audits generally go for, I guess? I'd have to ask, but I can ask when I get back. What was that question? Look into the cost of a road safety, road safety audit. Yep. Audit. Okay. Yeah, that's the in this letter here that I have uh, for you <laughs> from Troy. Okay, and we were I know. I know. Just like, hmm. what can we do without spending any money? So we can do paint and maybe a couple of signs. <laughs> that <laughs> was the idea going into this. But if you can justify so. the safety, I'm sure the town will. Yeah, go through. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think this was a very good productive thing, and I appreciate you guys spot sponsoring it. Actually, I like the dialogue back and forth and the picking of brains and the openness of people to listen. You know, nobody—I don't think there's a single person here with closed mind tonight. Really. I it's, think it was a very well. Thank you for well showing done. up. Yes, and thank you. Yeah, for really. <laughs> A lot of town meetings, you feel like you're just sitting there talking to the statue, like the selectmen. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I know because it's, they don't want to get, you know, I get it, but this is productive. These workshops are, I think we try to make them, you know. Like I said, I watch almost all of your meetings, not always live, but mostly, you know what I mean? And you, you guys are facing me, you know, good thing we don't have a thumbs up, thumbs down page because as, soon as, <laughs> as soon as, as soon as that horse round opens up, <laughs> you guys are going to be flat jackets. <laughs> 
It's a D intersection. Yeah, D, all right. Mm -hmm. D at the moment. Yeah. But you can't stop progress. And this thing with this, you know, buying up land and everything, it's all reactionary because we only get the money after somebody develops something because they took it out of current use and now we have a pot of gold. Well, if we had the pot of gold in front of it, maybe we would have bought the land and the development would never be there. We'd, everything's backwards. We need to do like a two or three million dollar bond or something to buy development rights like on 102, I don't know if you're aware, but on Route 102 in Lenendary across from the fire station, that, that farm stand with the bark mulch and the pellets and they make logs. Mm -hmm. Town of Lenendary bought that thing about 20 years ago. They bought the development rights. That guy can make logs as long as he wants to make logs. He can sell as many barrels of whatever he sells forever. It'll never be anything. Eventually it'll get shut down, and, but it's never going to be houses. Lenendary does a ton of that stuff. We, we should be, in my opinion, trying to do some of that stuff ourselves because even if we spend three or four million, that's nothing, you know, compared to what we're going to spend. You know, I think, I think we need to find a way to be in control of our own destiny And this grand, where we passed a town meeting this year, where we let you guys, whoever it is control more than a million dollars because the puck got full. You ain't buying nothing in today's dollars for a million. Number one, and number two, the only way those millions got there is because somebody already is developing something that we never wanted developed. And we're punishing them we get their money but are we really using that money to block somebody else from developing are we really doing you know what what can we do as a community for a few million dollars to save us tens of millions of dollars i'm talking to the wrong committee well <laughs> you know because they're citizens they got friends we need conservation conservation more is likely and you're taking notes i i wrote that down <laughs> i just think if we could buy some development rights even if we don't out and out buy the land you know should we be talking to Wilson's? You know what I mean? Should, you know, you want to talk about an instant overnight change of our community. Wait till Wilson's goes away. <laughs> I don't I, without money, I, you can have all the greatest ideas in the world, but without money, I, I could go to the conservation commission and she has the same exact feelings. But if we don't have the cake, that horse farm should be ours. We shouldn't even be talking about 64 in two units of the house. That's too close to the road. Oh, I you know, but it is what it is. We're stuck with whatever we're stuck with. I think you guys did the best you could with what you had. I mean, if they meet your regulations and meet all the rules, you really can't say no. When or the only one who wins are the lawyers. Probably if our impact is. <laughs> well, I think, you know, um, these are all great discussions. And um, I hope that, you know, you got, when we have, if we have another workshop, that you guys come back and um, we can we can talk some more about it. Well, if she does a good job on Facebook. I wouldn't have known about it. You know what I mean? Yes. That's, that was my. I, was I mean, I know Kim to told me at town voting that this would be coming up. Yeah. yeah. And because I watched your meetings, I kind of had a little idea. But what really got me was like it was Saturday night. I'm like, well, Luciano's night is Tuesday night for me and my wife. <laughs> well, tonight was subs. Um, you know, because I wanted to come. This is important. This. What it you is. Guys are, this is this is a big deal. What we're talking about here tonight, not just. If it applies to Albuquerque, someday it's going to apply to something else. And I think you, you know, you sort of hit the nail on the head. I mean, our, you know, the role is to preserve the rural character of Litchfield. And I think in order to preserve it, um, we need to invest in it and, and as a town. So I think that's important. So. Some who's plain speaking needs to get up because I think this say the citizens look at we spend three million and buy this piece of land. Oh, we don't buy it. Someone else buys it. And then, you know, show them down just in five years what it's going to cost them. You know what I mean? Just I, the old spend a little now, pay me now, pay me later type thing. And, you know. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming this evening. It's been a pleasure. Um, and look forward to seeing you again at future bookshop. We need to we'll, get, we'll get the word out again. Do we, do we want, I was, I was. Thank you. Sometimes we just we have you. you know business. We could just the bite the bullet you know, and set a date. We have no yeah. client coming in. You know. Well, we hope to see you again at the next. If time. we if we do it in a month from now, it'd be the twenty first. The twenty first. Are we doing it in a month from now? June. I would like to keep it. Moving. Yeah. Or well, they all left, but yeah. let's say June twenty first. All right. Let's say twenty first. Okay. Perfect. We we'll definitely put it on Facebook again because obviously that's effective. So. Really, yeah, I was trying to rile up the conversation. It worked, yes. I have Troy's letter to you, but I wasn't sure how tonight was going to be. And he was on vacation, so I'll show you. It was basically how, you know, if we were going to hire a 
firm to look at Albuquerque, a current state. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll read it. I'll, I'll let you read the letter. Okay. If you even bother at this point, if we're going to have it going to go forward. All right. I can talk to the new police. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll have, I'll have Steve Weber do that. Through board, board yeah. I'll have Steve Weber talk to him. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, the next item is committee reports. Any reports from any committees? We did go to the NRPC. We did. I, I even had a <laughs> event <laughs> at the, the Bella Winery. It was very nice, by the way. Oh, I'd like to say it's a good, good venue. Quiet, but a very good venue. That was very good. Um, I'll talk about that one last. Uh, next board of selectmen meeting for Joan uh, will be Monday, May 23rd, 6.30 p.m. here at the town hall. The next capital improvement plan committee will be Monday, June 6th, June, <laughs> 6 p.m. here at the town hall. Uh, the next quarterly NRPC full commissioner meeting will be Wednesday, June 15th, 30 Temple Street, Nashua, New Hampshire at their headquarters. Um, May 11th, we had our, uh, what do we want to call it, our well, it wasn't a quorum. Our annual, what do we, what do we call it? Uh, annual forum. Annual forum. Um, we discussed um, the energy trends that are coming in New Hampshire. Um, I think the biggest takeaway that I had, I, I found it very interesting. And um, we had some policymakers there. Um, I think the biggest question that we all were uh, thinking about was if electronic cars, if people start buying these cars, can our grid handle it? It sounds like the grid will need some work, but getting the energy to the grid, whether it's natural gas, is really the problem. It's getting energy to the grid to give us energy. So um, the state has some work to do, but I have a feeling the country in its whole has a lot to do to get the electronic cars where they want it to be. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, the Conservation Commission will meet the first week of June, John third, the first Thursday of uh, June. Uh, it's six thirty here in town hall. Um, you attend the fishing derby this past weekend. It seemed to be a success. Uh, it was well done, well attended. Saw some nice pictures posted. Yes, <laughs> um, we had a good turnout. Um, the Lower Mac, Mac Local River Advisory Committee. We have not had a meeting. Um, there's no projects that have come up yet, um, but I. Always look um, on the emails to make sure uh, everything comes up. And of course, the capital improvement committee meeting will uh, we're meeting at the uh, first Monday in June. So. Um, we did have some volunteers who had some interest in planning board capital improvement and zoning. Uh, they weren't here tonight, um, so if any if anybody out there um, who did submit an application for either the planning board or capital improvement uh, committee, um, please get in contact with us if you're interested, um, and um, uh, you can show up at our next meeting. Uh, you're welcome to come, and uh, we can do an interview. And anything from you, Kate? Um, budget committee is meeting next Thursday the 26th, um, but uh, the season hasn't started yet, so there's, there's not much at the end of there. Uh, wasn't there, I thought I saw another public input, but it wasn't on the agenda items. Oh. We might have to read that for next uh, meeting. Uh, what was it? Is it the sidewalk impact fees you wanted to discuss? Joan sent something. Here it is. Town center from a resident. Oh, a town, yeah, yeah. Town center one. Um, that was sent oh. yesterday, yesterday morning. Okay. But it was not an agenda item. Can we save that for, for the next meeting? Oh, we can meeting? talk about we it. Do that for the next, next meeting. meeting? Absolutely. Okay. We'll just make sure we note it. Okay. Um, did anybody have an, I know James left early because I don't think he was feeling well. Um, anybody have an opportunity to take a look at the, um, the minutes from 419. I, I guess we lost, can't approve them because we've lost, because we've lost, uh, <laughs> we lost James. So. <laughs> so we'll have to wait till he returns. So, okay. um, any other business? Uh, Jay, do you have anything? I do not. Okay. Do you have anything? 
Um, I think I do have one more question, kind of for Jay, kind of for you, and it's for Kate. Um, nothing to be decided tonight, but just maybe a discussion. Um, impact fees. If anybody uses sidewalk impact fees, I think Kate was trying to raise a point. Yes, on that. they do. Uh, Troy seemed to think it can get a little gray there, you know, but I don't know enough about that yet. We haven't had time to delve into it, but since you're working on impact fees later, I don't know if other towns have that. But just something to think about. We can have a discussion about that at a different time. Absolutely. Because um, the, the Board of Selectmen would want to hear it, but they want to hear what the Planning Board and the Capital Improvement Board think about it first before it's brought up to the Board of Selectmen. For all the impact fees or, or just, just the sidewalk one? one? Oh, okay. All right. So is that something we need to add add to the agenda for like a yeah I, um, that maybe we need to see that after the capital improvement looks at it I, um, whenever you're ready to add it to the agenda um, you can add it to a planning board agenda item and then we'll discuss it here and then mm -hmm. we'll discuss it at the capital improvement plan mm -hmm. yeah, we, can, we can absolutely discuss it yeah, yeah. yeah. all right here's 10 people time to research it yeah. um, so just one more thing on any other business, um, we are still looking, and I know we did get some applications for, for all, um, people interested in the planning board, but we are still looking for people. If there's anybody else who's interested and in, possibly interested in, in being in coming an alternate to the planning board, um, we would welcome uh, you to come to one of our meetings and, and file up, fill out an application. Talk to Joan McKibben, our planning board administrator, and she can set you up with that. So. Uh, I have nothing else, um, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All right. And and, and since we we're, we're, we're well, we don't have a clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we stay here for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, James, can you come back? Anybody <laughs> in the hall? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we can. Um, all those in favor of adjourn. Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. I think you can definitely decide to leave. I think we can <laughs> decide to leave. I don't think we're here held here indefinitely. It's not a false imprisonment, so we're not going <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this evening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night.